What's up, guys? This episode is brought to you by our friends at Bubba Coos Burritos, our go-to spot for building better burritos. Absolutely, guys. And don't forget to use promo code CHAMP15. That gives you 15% off your entire order online only. Real show. Here we go. Real show. Here we go. You know that it's got to be that time, so this is what we share. What keeps on getting them all amped in advance? Come on. You and I rocking out with Iron Man F.E.? Rogers rants. Whatever's happening out, we're putting the most minutes in. You already know what that's about. You know that winners win. Crush whatever's on task. Check the podcast. It's the champ in the trip. Let the ball blast. Nico, we got our man Nico Storetti, Tom's River native. Um, Played football for Connecticut? University of New Hampshire. University of New Hampshire. It was up that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Broke mad records in, in, at High School East. Um, wrote four books, I believe, right? Yes, sir. Um, runs a, a strength and conditioning and football um, clinics and private training, all that stuff. So good to have him on the show. I think uh, Nico's just a, a good soul, a good soul out there, maybe a little different than most people that we know. And uh, it's good to get his perspective on things. It very much has some uh, some Jesse uh, qualities. Jesse to vibes. You. Jesse and vibes. Everybody yeah. loves Jesse. Great you guys guy. are yeah, yeah. great guy. Yeah, great guy. I was a very into the great spiritual uh, being in the. Do you, well, real quick, do you bleach or not bleach? <laughs> that's Roger. Do you sun your asshole? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Okay. I haven't crossed. Jesse's <laughs> a little. He's a little deeper down the rabbit hole than you are. There. Sure. I haven't crossed that bridge. Not no. yet. Not yet, at least. No. No. It hasn't it hasn't come my way. Um, so uh, let's talk about your books, man. Um, you know, first and foremost, I think you brought some in for us, actually, if you want to show yeah, the camera. Um, sure. What led you down that road? I mean, you kind of started off life um, looking like An you athlete. might be a, yeah, you, you might have even, you know, tried your foot at uh, professional football, and um, I think you had some injuries along the way, and how does, how do you go from that to becoming an author? So, yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, well, first and foremost, thank you guys. Of you course. Know, I've known yeah. you guys a while now, and we've had our own talks, and, you know, to have this time and opportunity to discuss exactly what it is that I like to do, and, you know, I think how it correlates to everyone's life, you know, especially if you have kids and you're into sports, so, um, but the authorship, you know, I, uh, I think this was just something that was dormant within myself as a kid you know I was always into art creativity you know all those things making highlight tapes you know um but sports just take so much time up especially when you're trying to be like one of the The guys guys. yeah Yeah, you Mm want to compete you want to play against the best um and when my col my college career kind of came to an end due to you know injuries and you know I think it's the the hourglass for all things you know for your for your physical body as an athlete you're on an hourglass you know like there's a time scale like it just is what it is you know um and being you know having 500 plus carries at the college level you know not including spring balls camps you know and then high school football you know all those years and being physical like the more violent you are in football the more you're applauded, you know, the more you're respected. I'm sure you can understand that. <laughs> so um, when that kind of gets shut off, that outlet is dark, you know, and, I, and that's kind of, that's what happened. You know, I kind of went through a really dark path in terms of mental health and mental illness. And uh, fortunately, it led to journaling. And then between meditation, journaling, <coughs> dreaming, I was like, oh, I think I'm supposed to write a book, you know, and I went for it, you know, and I, I, I figure something out, you know, and then I just kept going. And at this point, it's more about, you know, when you leave this earth, you know, there's like a tombstone, you know, we're so like primitive in our way of honoring the deceased, you know, and if I can give anything to the next generation, to my family, to my kids, and, and live it out while I'm here and seeing their expressions and down the road they can give it to their kids. That that's kind of what I do it for. 
Yeah. Ultimately, you know. I so like that. that would be the ultimate way to live on, you know. Yeah. Have, I, I mean, not not only accolades and accomplishments, but especially like something like that. Like yes. you literally could pass that on and yeah. on. And uh, yeah, dude, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's your words, it's your ideas, it's your dreams, and they can sit down, and it's always there. Right. You know, it's a good way to put it because we've talked many times in here about mental health, and so many people struggle with it, and what the what the right way to get on get on a better path is. And, and some people choose, you know, some people check out. Some people choose that. We've had guests on the show that have checked out and chose to leave this earth. And I've always said, you know, Frankie and I have talked about it. Then you leave other people to tell your story. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I dealt with some mental health issues, you know, back during my dark days a few years back. And, uh, you know, I had some crazy thoughts. And then sure. uh, you come back to reality. Nobody can make sense of it when you're in the moment. But you come back to reality. And I don't want somebody else telling my story oh something was wrong with him oh he had you know he had a brain he was something wrong with it i don't i don't want i want to stay and i want to tell my own story i, w- I would have did you justice yeah yeah i'm sure you would have you yeah <laughs> i'm sure you would have so yeah, uh, um you know i think i think writing could be a in, not, not that you're looking to be famous or be no. me in particular or or anybody um or get notoriety out of it but just write putting your thoughts to paper can be very therapeutic you know in the ancient days that was that was considered magic right you know to be able to like create a vibration into form that holds eternal understanding that like that that surpasses space time Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what they were trying to keep their awareness focused on you say you you said vibration jesse talks about that a lot the vibration of the earth and being in sync with it and grounding yourself in mother earth is that something that you also uh believe in yeah well that's uh that's a comedic that's a hermetic law one of the hermetic principles of hermes is all things move Mm -hmm. nothing 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 is stuck nothing is stopped everything is hermes or hermocles hermocles right hermes mercurius chismagustus All right. I'm wrong. I thought Hermes. I was, I was about to give Frankie a lot of fucking credit right there. No, I was like, no. damn. There's Heracles. Is, is Her- There's Heracles. Her- 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 there is, right? Which but, is like Hercules. Uh, but who, but uh, I thought, what would you say the name was again? Say it again. Hermes and Mercury. Hermes. Isn't it Hermes? You fought him. Yeah, the, yeah. The devil? No. Hermes is in, no. in Hercules. Hades. Hades. Right? Hades is, it's yeah. The devil. Okay. Oh, I'm confusing stuff. Hermes Franca. He fought Hermes. Yeah, you're right. I did. I did. Fought that dude. That was a great win. That uh, was a great win. He was on a streak back then, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember your your dad at his house on the way down into the basement. I think you guys, your dad had a theater down there, mm-hmm. if I remember right. Mm-hmm. But he had a lot of your old, and there was one, a big one of you yeah. and Hermes Franca. Unfortunately, that, that house, was like a. That house burnt down, unfortunately, yeah. and a lot of that stuff was lost. Was was that the fight? <clears throat> the, the knee lock? Yeah. No, arm arm bar. That knee was lock was Tyson. 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 But he called me an arm bar. That was pretty crazy. I had to, you know, I don't know how I got out of it. He was on a streak, man. Hermes was on a streak back then. Oh, yeah. He was he was beating people up. Yep. Um, So, yeah, it yeah. kind of, the vibration thing kind of just, when I studied that and that principle in the book, right, there's. But, but I'm, I'm run you back. When you were saying, leave, like, that, that's considered magic, but, like, and leaving yeah. that, that, is a book like leaving something that can pass yeah. on you mean all things here <laughs> remain as like debris of your soul mm-hmm. you know all things you do on earth are like imprinted onto the earth in these these grids and lines that are non-physical but they're there you step into them you feel them in certain locations you know you don't know what the heck they are because we're strapped to these senses and and the senses are kind of limited mm-hmm. in terms of frequency and pitching kind of like a radio Mm-hmm. You know, your eyes are on a certain frequency, your ears, your nose, everything. Right. But the soul is on the understanding plane, which is like the eternal path of truth, which, right. you know, we're all I, on. Is that like well, do you, the fifth dimension, fourth dimension, you know that shit? Or mm, no? I don't really go. Listen, I'm a human being. When I went to Nepal and I studied with a yogi, we did a, like the astrology and we went over like these houses and the stars and. Like I'm here. Like I gotta focus on this. Like that. That's like a little too far out for me. Like trying to figure out dimensions. I, I see that more so as right. right. No, not dimension. Right? Yeah, three D. Right, three dimensional. Four D. He says we're gonna be five dimensional. Supposed to go to five D eventually. What the fuck yeah. is like four? I get four. What's four is like you know 
All right, I get I get three. I get right. four. We added one. How the fuck we had another one? Right. But doesn't he also say like we have the five senses now, and we're supposed to <laughs> when we get to that fifth dimension? What are the fi- what are our five senses? Uh, taste, smell, touch, <laughs> hearing, uh, and sight. And sight, right? Yeah. Five. Yeah. What's so what's feeling? Sense? Feeling's nothing. What's the sixth it's a sense? Good movie with Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a really good movie. Now feeling, I guess feeling is in a sense. I guess that'd be like. I guess humans don't care about feelings. Mm. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> Try doing a podcast with him. Yeah. I'm, what do you? Why you? I why? Do I hurt your feelings? You do. You, you sensitive do. bitch. I go home. <laughs> I've <laughs> gone home many times and cried. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> Nico, the bowl. I noticed you had that outside. Yes. What What does that represent? What does that do? Well. We're, sp- we're speaking on vibration. Uh-huh. This right here actually emits a vibration, you know, right. as all things do, but you kind of can't see it mm-hmm. always, you know. But this this is a Tibetan singing bowl. It's handmade. Um, it's seven different metals, and I hand-selected it myself in Kathmandu, Nepal, when I was away studying. How, oh, long, how long you go out there for? I was in Nepal for 15 days. I was studying with a Vedic yogi for 13 days in his home. And then two nights I was in Kathmandu just as a tourist. Mm. And that's kind of where I learned more, to be honest. Solo. Went there solo? I went with a friend. Wow. Yeah. She was a medium, you know. Okay. Do you, not, not, that doesn't mean like a small or large or medium. You know what a medium is? <laughs> yes, you idiot. <laughs> Clairvoyant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, that's the, I don't know. sort of. Yeah, say, yeah, I don't think it's clairvoyant. It's still a strange. Well, maybe, subject. maybe it gets kind of yeah. the same thing. Clairvoyant, well, the clairvoyant is like they just kind of know shit. Medium is like you're talking to dead people. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what she was. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't want that job. That would suck. No, that's like cool dead people. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> like someone looking for like some help and stuff because they did something bad. Like remember how I? Go you remember how I? Oh, Movie that's how fucking I? great. When they, they smoked the dead guy and then they could see him. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd be. I, I, I'm okay with that. Because they had to pass the test. They, they made smoked, a plant they with smoked them. like Jefferson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they made a plant with them. Like people, people being clairvoyant or mediums. Um, I I can accept that theory or that principle. But when you start charging money for it, that's when I get a little suspect. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get a little suspect when you say, "Give me fifty dollars and I'll tell you about your future." Dude, I had some. <laughs> they say it's a whole energy exchange thing. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I guess the dollar represents. A form of energy in terms of a currency their career they're trying to develop it i don't know maybe i mean i don't know much about sounds it. like a good hustle to me yeah <laughs> that's what i'm saying I, i'm trying to figure out how to be a medium um what but, was the what was the jamaican this, lady that was on tv um Whoopi goldberg no in, in Ghost? no no she the the remember you used to, like miss cleo miss cleo you used to be able to call the 1-800 she line wasn't and, a medium she just knew like how to she was just a psychic not uh, a medium, right. a psychic. A medium talks to dead people. A psychic just knows. I feel like if you I think gave Miss Cleo the right amount of money, so I don't know. Yeah. I think it's like <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's they 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 kind of both interchange. But like what? Like a med- like what's a psychic? Someone who can see the future and past. I well, I mean, give us I guess give us the exact definition of, of a psychic. psychic and the exact definition of a medium. And the exact definition of a clairvoyant. Oh, all right, bro. Let's There's three in a row, baby. Let's, Come on. Let's, let's cheese. Calm down. Uh, uh, Calm down, Frank. I'll help, him, help him out. I'll help him out. All right. Jeez, oh, what was that? Sorry. Oh, that was you. <laughs> Did I fuck it up? Yeah, I think that's why. Yep, there you yeah, go. Yeah. We're back. All right, I'll stay away. Psychic means other relating to the human soul or mind. There's something mental as opposed to physical. And a medium is about halfway between extremes. No, well, that, that's like medium for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mathematical definition yeah. of medium. <clears throat> Just, um, the mean average of the sum amount is medium. No. <laughs> medium can also mean a person through whom the spirits of the dead are alleged to be able to contact the living. Okay, so medium talks to the dead. Clairvoyant does what? Man, she's getting a lot of time on this thing. A person who claims to have a supernatural ability to perceive events in the future or beyond normal sensory contact. Well, clairvoyant, clairvoyant is a psychic. Psychic, yeah, same right? thing. But psychic okay. does no. He gave like psychic. He gave some other different definition. I felt like. Right, yours was like probably like a Close wasn't it hadn't didn't have to do with supernatural shit. No. Yeah, that was like different. Like psychic is like psychosis and shit. Yeah. No, I don't know about that. 
interdimensional understanding. Maybe that's a psychic. Right. But then that's dimensions, right? Like, you know? Well, I see it as like... They say, they say, I mean, they who the fuck they are, but people say that there are dimensions. There could be dimensions. Like up to like certain amount, like, t- like 20 fucking dimensions or something. Like 11, 11 are, is, is agreed upon. Then some people say it could be like another more or something like that. Mental planes. There's like, like planes, like... Our physical body doesn't go to those planes, though, right? It's just your... But, like, think about... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, go okay. ahead, Bill. No, go ahead. Okay, I have to no. stop asking questions. That's okay, all. go ahead. Because think about it like this. Maybe, like, it dimensions this. You ever see, like, they put, like, those time-lapse cameras on something, and you don't realize something's happening, but it happens within a year. You yeah. know? Is that a different dimension? They're in a different time length than we are. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of a different dimension. How is it? A, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a different timeline just because we can't witness it happening, right? Because it's so slow. It's yeah. still happening I in, know, our, like, in our but, timeline. But like maybe like there, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of creative. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. I think that's like more space time. Like space time. Space continuing? time and like time itself. Eternal time. Like space time is limited to spaces unraveling of which is the physical universe and the non-physical, which is what 90% of the universe is non-matter, you know? So, of which we still don't understand. And it's energy. There's life in it. So the way I see it is all the form is the conscious mind and all the non-form is the subconscious mind of the universe because it's all mental, you know? And then within those planes are different you know, frequencies, you know, there's plant life, mm-hmm. you know, the fungi is in its own kingdom. That that fungi and mushrooms and that whole world underground is so intriguing, man. Mycelium. It, it's so intriguing. Like, I think there's so much there that's still undiscovered, you know what I mean? I how they, they grow and how they, it's like a nerve, it's like the Earth internet nervous system. Internet. It is, it is. Earth yeah. internet. It is. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm a fun guy. And most people have no idea that even exists, you know? It's 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 a wild world underground. But I mean, it's I, I guess it's in every it's, every ecosystem everywhere, it's right? The res- it's what's responsible for our, our existence. Right. Without the, the fungi, no no planet would be able to survive the way ours I does. I think too, like when uh, I think I, I remember seeing something about like I think when maybe when oh like when um, there was like that volcano that erupted in Earth and kind of had like the whole uh, what do you call it, nuclear winter and nothing grew. Fucking that's when and the dinosaurs all died and everything. Mm-hmm. They said that's when mushrooms took over. Right, they took over and pro- you know and then eventually. But the one place and they probably cleaned some shit up. I would guess that. They can't exist, right? Would be the North and South Pole. Like they can't exist in I don't know. severe cold climates, right? Well, if you look at the uh, stoned ape theory, you guys heard of that, right? I have not. No, Frank Roger from- hasn't. I have. I yeah. got stoned in here one time, and I was a stoned ape. But go yeah. ahead. Well, the stoned ape theory essentially mm-hmm. is in that time frame. I spoke frame. about this a little bit. I think maybe, maybe, maybe not. Well, let me, let me see here. What that you time frame when there was those primates, those you know human-like oh, primates. Yes. yes. As they roamed around yes. Africa and stuff, like there was like piles of crap, yep. you know, and yep. in those piles of crap, there was mushrooms, yep. which were psilocybin friendly, right? And they were just like, oh, just eating, yep. like because my dog man, eats that's crap. That's how we evolved into they, men, no, or well, as into no, the no, human no. species. Well, no, right? yeah. kind of. It really is our brains develop. Yeah. I don't know, our brains you develop so quickly this, right? in a million they, years. They, yeah. yeah. Why so did we quick. develop so much quicker than every other animal species on Earth? Right. right. Well, they think it's either because we cooked meat. That's one. It's one theory, and we got more nutrition when you cook the meat. You still had to get to fire, though. There's a level of intellect to get you there. Correct, but uh, <coughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, right. But that's why it could be the the fire, us cooking the meat, or it could be this. You know, mushrooms. They say you know you're friggin' it's firing uh, neurons mm-hmm. and makes you you know your the brain the brain developed that much more. But why doesn't it still continue to do that? That's what I'm wondering. Well, what? Why would you say it's not? I mean, yeah, true. That true. we're we're continuing to evolve. Would you agree? 
<laughs> in today's day and age, we might be digressing, actually. But yeah, I mean, if 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 listen, if you pass your genes on, <laughs> all right, they're gonna be hairless, fucking wrinkleless people. <laughs> I don't know about hairless. Maybe with some Botox, they might be wrinkleless. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Be like you're shaved. Yeah, I, know you're it, shaved I know you met. You're I knew shaved. It, I knew it was a fucking Botox. It was a Botox reference for that's sure. What I'm just saying, there's nothing wrong with a little botch. No, you look good, buddy. Thank you, pal. <clears throat> So, um, speaking of that, and I definitely don't want to get political, but we live in a, in a, in a time and an age where you know there's a definite difference between uh, being religious and being spiritual. And mm-hmm. I consider you very much to be a spiritual person. I think that a lot of people are becoming much more spiritual in today's day and age, um, as a way to explain a lot of what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? And um, not so much religious. I think actually people are kind of tending to drift away from the church. Um, at least that would be my perspective mm-hmm. on it. But uh, would you agree with that? That people in today's day and age really, because we're, we're almost in a time of good versus evil. You know, but they have a religion. These people. I see spirituality as like that. like these people that aren't religious. They have a religion that they follow, and it's like could be it's their devotion, wokeness, or oh, this I see or that. Saying. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. They find a, a, some yeah. fucking thing to yeah to Not consume them. Food, right. I see what you're saying. I think spirituality. Followers, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're right. People create their own religions, right? Yeah. I see it like. That's what I say. That like a lot of people think, uh, you know, think like religion's better than what these people create in 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 place of religion. I think mm-hmm. we need, like, we kind of need, you know, we all need a purpose, right? Of course. And religion kind of gives people purpose. Of course. If people don't have that. They kind of find, try to look for it elsewhere. Some people find it in in like ideologies or in agendas or you right. know or, or, or narratives. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or nothing. Or nothing. And yeah. that's perfectly fine too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what spirituality is about. Like, if I don't study all the religions, then I can't really like speak on them. That's kind of isn't, how I, isn't like Buddhism like literally nothingness. Like you can get to nothingness. Is it Buddhism or one of them? What's the other? I just one? think one human beings like to compartmentalize anything you know mm-hmm. i don't think siddhartha or guatamana the man walking around the himalayas was like i'm cre- the creator of buddhism everyone bow you know like i just think in time everything's been misconstrued for sure and i think but so you know about buddhism yeah i study bu- buddhism okay, so i have a, give I me have a give buddhist. me a look because i because i like hinduism is hinduism different than buddhism well. Yes. Okay. Correct. Explain. Ex- give me. Give me how they're different, because I have no idea. So Hinduism has like hundreds of deities mm-hmm. that represent. You know, what a deity is. A deity a is like a god. I was gonna say god. a god. I don't yeah. want this a guy god, to make fun of me. An yeah. expression of god. They uh-huh. have Vishnu. A deity. I guess you. They have uh, Shiva. They have Kali. They have Hanuman. Aren't some of them like elephant faces and shit, right? Ganesh. Ganesh what is yeah. a demi? Who's god? the head? Who's the head? The demi is like a couple gods, the, right? The, the like the god of the gods. Yeah, who, Shiva. In, in Shiva in uh, Shiva in Hinduism, in Hinduism. Shiva. Now in Buddhism, there is no god, right? So or is there? But but again, the Hinduism in that in there because that's the number one most studied religion in the world. Right Hinduism. Now. Hinduism and the longest surviving. But it's not that it has the most. Um, the Muslim like, religion, uh, I would think, would be the biggest. No, no, Christianity no they have a the, lot. Still Christianity, I believe, is the highest really? religion, yeah. Really? Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I, th- I think <laughs> we might have to yeah. stat check that. I, I, was, I think maybe, Hinduism. Maybe. You might be honest. right because You're Indi- going Hindu. India. I mean, he He's might be right Christian. I'm going Muslim. Hinduism what because gave me. India has so many people. What are you looking highest? Yeah. Who, who, high, you know, percentage of religions in the world. Right? What is the percentages of yeah. all the religions in the world? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Hindu is what awoken is what gave me an awakening. I studied a Hinduism book and then, but like, uh, you know, you know, I just the technique it taught me to meditate. So one god is over all gods. There for them. Again, I think from the Western mind, that's kind of how we perceive it. But, but in their world, these are creative expressions of the <clears throat> ultimate god of Shiva. The the yeah, like the, they have even one above him. Uh, it's 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 so difficult to explain like shiva is the creator the sustainer and the destroyer when he had a dreadlock cut off his head hit the ground cannabis plants grew wow he sounds pretty cool yeah <laughs> and then he's also not nataraj nataraj is if you ever seen the hindu god dancing with like a yeah, bunch yeah, of arms, arms? Yeah, that's yeah. shiva dancing that's the cosmic so, dance. so he's the same person 
but that it's not a person. It's same. The, yeah. Same entity. Exactly. Same being. Exactly. Like when yeah. you see your kid dance and, and, and scream joy, that's the cosmic express, expression of Shiva. It's not like in a, a person that you worship. It's a it's the cosmic expressive energy of the co- cosmos that they put in these little windows of of ornaments to kind of praise and honor, but they're reflections of ourselves. They're actually us. And that's how like the Egyptians were as well. You know, we're, we're as, they had raw, as Christians, raw and this and that, all right? these symbols yeah. represented <clears throat> organs on the human body. As Christians, <laughs> you know? we were created in the image of God as well, though, right? Humans like Christianity, I believe, was when, <clears throat> you know, Yeshua, Jesus kind of, you know, he did. He, he took a little detour in life from 12 to 29. And those 17 years are kind of what I study, you know, and I believe he traveled the globe yeah they, there's but there are uh theories he was in india in india and sh- in her, yeah you know? i mean like really i said was. if you're a spiritual cat uh, like you're gonna want to study religions and cultures as a human you got to think his first three years of life he was outside of pyramids you know mm-hmm. his parents had to put him in egypt because in his hometown they were just killing babies because mm-hmm. of this prophet coming his parents were now if you were to look at the india perspective they were christ they were Kriya, like they practice certain forms of meditation and energy work in their consciousness, of which comes from India, comes from Egypt. It just changes all over the globe. Mm-hmm. It's like a like the the uh, telephone game, you know. And you know, Jesus was just a cat who wanted to study all this stuff. He was in love with God, you know. And and from I think twelve to twenty nine, seventeen years when he dipped from everyone, that's when he went to India, Nepal. Um, every place and practiced everything and everywhere he went people tried killing him everywhere because that's the that's the law down here in this dimension when your light becomes so bright the darkness follows you know it's just what it's just what it is i don't know why you know why do you see a lot a fly go after a light you know mm-hmm. it's just it just is what it is you know um but this is in in inscriptions in egypt these understandings of the universe for us as humans to understand but it's kind of like like lost more so than hidden because it's in plain sight you know you can go there and touch it and see it and and study it that's interesting i'd never heard that so those 17 years there's a gap now you never knew that i never knew that and then he started his ministry in his hometown wow and jerusalem I knew I knew I didn't know, I didn't know it was yeah. quite Nazareth. seventeen, I knew, but I I did yeah. hear about their rumor. You know, I hadn't heard that in books. I think right. Yeah. So books say he was. And in the India Indian yogis consider him like a Christ conscious born soul, meaning his soul from many lifetimes through devotion and work, um, but inner work. Is it, in Hindu believes in reincarnation and all that stuff, right? Exactly yeah. from the Hindu perspective, the way they saw him was as a christ-born soul meaning so there's this cosmic mind that created the universe and when things take into form into the universe they call that christ consciousness in that in other religions <clears throat> however some souls have already attained that understanding prior to coming here they kind of just take like a volunteer job kind of like let me go down to this dimension and just sprinkle a little light to like elevate that dimension it's just beyond our understanding. It's laws that we can't aren't we we're not responsible to understand. <laughs> you know, figure out what you gotta do right now today, you know? But that's how I see Jesus was one of those souls that was on a higher plane of existence that, that don't volunteer his time on earth knowing his body was nothing mm-hmm. compared to the eternal light of which is weaved within all matter and non matter. Kinda like a projection light at a movie theater putting a movie on the screen and then that light that's the christ consciousness gotcha. but the cosmic consciousness is is what embodies all things is what is the om is the the shiva the hindu the the osiris the the jesus there's no person of the cosmic mind it's an eternal mind of which we're all kind of dancing through for existence where are you gonna go right you know right. where you go we are i mean our lives here are literally uh just a blip you know what i mean we're we're here for such a 
short time. But what what happens? I mean, this this our planet is made up of you know water and soil, and we're rapidly ruining it. What happens to humans, and you know, in the future? Do, does this planet continue Bro, to exist? Listen, listen, I, I believe uh, this almost like the planet was here long before we were, and will probably be here long after we're gone. I kind of side with that. I think, I think we over exaggerate a lot about the Earth. I think the Earth is great. I think it's fine. I think if the humans stop doing pollution and, and stop littering and but we're not we're not going to leaving that's their my, car running that's kind of my point we're not going to the accumulation so what, what happens uh, we outlive earth the universe earth balance, outlive us the universal balance earth doesn't outlive us it might get rid of us in a process you know what i mean yeah but it will exactly. outlive us by getting rid of us you know what i mean the earth or forces outside the earth like what earth happened to the mother dinosaurs? nature right, like yeah, a, like yeah, a, yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. cosmic right. event right like a, you know even exactly what at solar all. flare like that yeah even like you now what happened in russia and ukraine like this is human humanity still i don't know? think we gotta worry about canada fucking with us <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. definitely not definitely not so wait, what, real quick did you get that the religions it says christianity is the biggest 2.2 mm. billion followers 31 percent of the world's population mm. then it's islam they don't have the percentage but that's uh. about one and a half billion uh hinduism is about one billion mm. buddhism is like Half a bill. So we got the top three. Yeah. Atheism, probably a billion too. Taoism, Sikhism, Judaism. Judaism's what? How much percent? How many? How many Jews are in the world? Small. Thirteen million Jews Small. in the world. How crazy is that? That, that is true. Small. Yes. Oh yeah, there's yes. select few. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Really? Yes. They all live in Lakewood. <laughs> I was gonna say ten, <laughs> ten million of them live in Lakewood. <laughs> That's crazy. And counting. <laughs> 13 million? There should be a time, like a, a body That's count ticker out there. That's mind-blowing to me. I never would have thought yeah. that. So in Israel, what, I mean, that's got to be there's the- like 10 million in Israel. Yeah, so there's only so, 3 million outside of Israel. Yeah, about that. Wow. Not to never, me. I would have never thought that. That's, that's why they're, that's why they're, they're um, multiplying or- um, <laughs> Reproducing, yeah, thank you. Reproducing so much. <laughs> Multiplying work, fine. Yeah, I know, we, you know, we got what you meant. No, you're right, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. And I need to. Bagel, I guess, it's crazy. Bro. I walked into a bagel shop once when I was working with my old man, and I was like, you know, that was when I first started becoming this character, Yahweh the Cosmo. You know, I don't know if you guys remember seeing me back in those days with my dreadlocks and I do. I like a bamboo stick and shit. <laughs> you know, and I walked into <laughs> this spot in the morning. I think my old man knew, like, this is going to be comical, you know. I walk into this place. I got cut jean shorts. Like, I'm scrapping metal, you know. It's like 8 in the morning. I open this place. There's a wrapped around line, like, you know, packed right downtown. <laughs> All their heads turn and look at me, and I'm just like, I look left and my right. I start laughing, and I just turn my head, and I walked out. I couldn't stay in there. I couldn't do it. I had to walk out. Really? They probably got good bagels, though. Oh, yeah. yeah I couldn't best. do it. I couldn't do it. Locks and bagels, baby. I, it felt like it was a movie, like a dream or really? something. I don't know how to explain it. You Everyone don't, was you don't strike at me. me as the type to be intimidated. I would think that wouldn't bother you at all. At that time where I was, I don't know, man. I had like a pink and purple bandana. I had cut jean shorts. I was all scrapped, oiled out. I know, but you got to that place because it seems to me, I mean, it's just now, an outside I'd be perspective cool. that you don't give a fuck. You didn't care no. what people, you're going to be yourself, right? No. Yeah. So. I just, I was like blown away by like. I've never been to a place like that, I mm. guess. You know, I've never seen that ever yeah. in my life. It's yeah. the first time I've ever seen that in my life. <laughs> what, uh, and now you also work with kids, right? Yeah. In what capacity? I mean, I know you do because you work with my son, but yeah. share, um, so share what you do. So, between, you know, sports performance training and life performance. So, it's like a, a blend of, Ultimately, just creating a, cre a safe space for kids to play sports. Well, I think it's important to mention that you were a standout athlete in high school. And yeah. I, I don't know much about your college career. I know I know that you had some injuries in college, but you went yeah. to the University of New Hampshire. But very much so in high school, I mean, you were you were a prospect. Right? Yeah, in I, football. Had a, I, had, I had some, you know, I did well in high yeah. school. But high school was easy. You know, it was fun. I didn't really know football yet until college. College was like... <laughs> this is this is grown man business now. Right. Like you got to be on your p's and q's. You got to be prepared. Is your some, ultimate goal to end up playing professional oh, yeah. football? Oh yeah, NFL. Was, that was it. Yeah. I was doing anything right. possible. That's kind of where the mental health came in because when you start getting injured, 
you know, between taking ibuprofen to get on the practice field, ibuprofen to get into a game, um, injections before games, you know, yeah. just to play football because you, you want to be out there. Right. So I, I put my body through that with no mindfulness at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I only meditated in my locker before games to envision myself scoring touchdowns. Right. That's it. <laughs> That's why often I, I talk to this guy because, you know, at the end of the day, he still has a family to come home to. He's still got a lot of living left, but. 17 fucking years of getting beat the fuck up this guy's been doing and he's and had, beating uh, a lot of motherfuckers up oh, too. of course he's new jersey's pride mm-hmm. but you know a lot of injuries and i think a more weak and i'm not talking about you at all my i'll i'll mm-hmm. say myself i would have i would have said fuck it this thing with all these fucking injuries are not worth it man and i never saw quitting this i, I was in this his old house when he was pulling well he wasn't doing it there but i knew what it was he had tampon shoved into his fucking i would have been like you know what that's a that's a good fight to leave on you know what i mean and uh i don't know it takes a a lot of a lot of heart a lot of drive a lot of desire to want to be in a contact sport like that roger i'm not as tall and good looking as you i like god buddy i think i take i i guess i'll take a lesson from todd frazier i don't think baseball has as many injuries and you get paid pretty well i'm gonna tell my son to play baseball yeah, <laughs> true. But they, yeah, there, there's still injuries. In there are, baseball. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely sure. not the same. It's not as violent. Not the same. No. Well, you can't. What I learned is you can't measure like what's inside somebody's heart. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's immeasurable. You know. Right. And someone's fire. It don't even make sense sometimes here on earth. Like I, you see those dudes free solo climbing these right. mountains. Oh, wow. Man. Like I get like panic attacks watching it. The same. Yeah. I do the same. Like, but I'm obsessed pan- with But then I have nightmares. Are you obsessed with watching it though? I can't. It's amazing. I get panic Roger attacks. loves watching it right till the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't like to finish it, but I'll watch it a bunch of times until right before it ends. <laughs> I fell asleep. Because he knows they're about to die I or something. I fell asleep, you loser. <laughs> I told him to watch a documentary. Yeah. It was so good. I said I watched it twice, which I did. But and at the very end, he yeah. dies. And I so never I'm like, yo, he died? He's like, who? I'm Alpinist. like, what? Alpinist. Yeah, Alpinist. Yeah. Alpinist. Oh, man. That kid was such a, such a talent, phenom, bro. Dude. Yeah. And what he I died have a on. I have a theory. He might still be alive, bro. You think he's living <laughs> I'm in the cave? Saying, it's my, that's my like, hopeful theory. You think he's living my whole theory. All they, no, uh, he, did, he didn't want the, the tension. He wanted nothing to do with true. that. They always so based it on They found rope. They found rope. It could have been anybody's rope. Listen, he pushed his friend off and said, I'll see I'm going. <laughs> you know, <laughs> think he's living on an island somewhere. Rob, the mean, reason I don't buy that is because he'd get spot. His his passion in life was climbing like you know crazy yeah, peaks. Yeah, and he'd yeah. get spotted somewhere. He was a recognizable yeah. guy. Yeah, no, you I, know? I mean, I'm just it's just a hopeful thing. Yeah, hopeful yeah, I know. when you play with fire, you get burnt, right? Yeah, yep. that's uh, you know. Um, yeah, I mean that in that world, I mean, geez, you're you're almost asking for it, yep. I mean, especially with the no no ropes. God bless. That one guy is still that ki- young kid is still alive though. What what what's his name? Um, the free solo guy, Alex, Alex Honnell. Yeah, Honnell. Yeah. He's still alive. He's bro. free. So- he's a free solo guy. And I, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Mo- it's mostly the free solo guys that die. So many of them have died. But he's supposed so much more calculated. He, he, you he's, think? Yeah. He I, called well, this kid. See, compare it to that kid. Yeah, he called that kid like outrageous. Yeah. Well, he's he, outrageous. He yeah. also called that kid a phenom. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. No, well, yeah, he said that guy. The, he goes. Well, I remember the guy broke his record. Right. Remember, and but barely trying to. Yeah. And then he went. And he's like, "Holy shit!" He went and fucking beat beat the record because yeah. he had because he ain't like that. Right. But that's what. See, that's kind of my point. Is even Honnell, right, whose record was beaten by literally like I think ten minutes by yeah. the kid that died. Yeah. By the Alpinist, forget yes. his name, and uh, Le Blue or something. He Le, had a Le, Le Blatt or Le Blue. Or he something had like to go that. back. A French name and beat that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he I had know. to go back. So it's that competitiveness yeah, that yeah. you're going to take chances, right? Yeah, because he did it. And, uh, I mean, right. I'm, Exta- substantially quicker. He too, did it but substantially mm-hmm. quicker. He like studied it on right. stuff. Yeah, right. But I'm saying, like, it, you, I feel like when you. And he said, normally I don't do that, but I just yeah. didn't like that my record got beat, so yeah. I had to go back, and he shattered it. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. so. And LeBlanc, LeBlanc, or LeBlanc, LeBlu, whatever. First solos, you're kind of running out of first solos. There's only so much shit left to climb. First, so it's solos. crazy, human beings, no, man. first, just... like peaks that nobody's ever climbed before. Uh, yeah, That's no, the most yeah, sought-after yeah. thing. Like, oh, did you see the one, the other one, 14 Peaks, that dude? Oh, yeah. 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 He's, he's I didn't that see that Nepali one. Nepali dude. from Nepal. He's crazy, that guy. Yeah, he's nuts, right? Amazing. He's shattered Human records. beings do but some crazy loves stuff. to drink and shit, too. We were, we were talking about that. So much For work. Real. So much work in his favor because the weather is that you're you're always up against the weather. And mm-hmm. it had to be magical for him to be, to get all those records and you know in that short amount of time. And it just kind of worked out for him. I don't know that that, that can ever be repeated because you'd have to have 
Set. He was made for that. Yeah, that kid. he was made for that. That was his. That was his dance. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you know what? Good for him. He experienced things that not many people do. You know, like your brain goes in different worlds when you're at that right. like, level of. A, I don't even know you want what you want to call it, like hormonal like overloads. So when you went out to Nepal and all stuff, do you get up? I mean, it's all mountains, right? Yeah, I was in Pokhara, right in the Himalayas. Uh. You know, um, it's amazing. You know, what's just, the elevation you're at there? You got to be at what? seven eight ten thousand feet there uh, yeah something like that because i was at 7200 feet in edwards colorado yeah. and i lived out there for five months but D- did you what yeah did you what, there? what brought you out there that that was like a, the beginning of my that's what the cover of my first bu- book is that's on a train track in edwards colorado mm. i lived out there as an author worked in restaurants i stayed at one of my friend's house who passed away on um, my friend todd walker who was shot in college Jesus. redhead shot. kid yeah, Why? I never told you about him. They shot him because he was a redhead. Uh, I'm just no, no. I mean, I'm just curious what red. I mean, says <laughs> actually, he would probably laugh at that. To be honest with you, he would appreciate that. Um, but he, uh, you know, he was from Edwards, Colorado. Great kid, Todd Walker, wide receiver kid. He went to a prep school in Chicago. He was a white kid with red hair. He played quarterback with an all black team in Chicago in a prep school. He was the fastest kid on the team. Skinny. All you had to do was say Chicago. I could fill in the ending. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, he was like a freak athlete. And I met him at UNH. I only knew him seven months. And we just, we were like two peas in a pod, you know. And uh, it was spring break. Um, he went home to Colorado. He went to uh, Boulder, CU, mm. to visit all his boys and whatnot. It was, you know, spring break. It was March Madness. It was St. Paddy's Day. You know what I'm saying? Like a great weekend, March 17th, 2011. And he was just like the bystander. He was like at people's apartments while they're getting ready. Like he, he's visiting, you know? So by the end of the night, one of his best friend's uh, girlfriend was like, oh, I kind of want to go home. He's like, all right, like I'll walk you home. And they're just walking home in the streets, like singing and dancing, being idiots, you know? And they're two kids who like come from the area. So like nothing really, there's no crime, mm-hmm. you know? So this kid came up from behind, like with a mask and a gun out a little bit and was like, give me everything you got, you know, like trying to rob them. And this uh, is in Colorado in um, Boulder. 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 Wow. Yeah. You don't you don't see that as a no, it was a strange occurrence. And uh, the girl like ripped the kid's mask down. I was like, go ask your parents for money. Like she thought it was a joke. And then he like shot a bullet up in the air and he's like, I'm not fucking around, you know. And that's when Todd like moved her out the way and was like yo dude like you know what the fuck like everything's good like you go your way we go our way we ain't got nothing we're college kids you know and he was like no you know and then todd he was a redhead you know and i've seen him kind of lose his cool a little bit he didn't attack the kid but he came from a dad who who hunts so like he was taught respect with guns so he looked at this kid and was like yo you're a punk ass bitch straight up that was his last three words called the kid a punk ass bitch and the kid shot him right in his chest, right in his heart, about five feet away. One shot, you know, 20 years old. And uh, he died instantly, basically. The kid ran away and had, like, tacos, you know, and, like, posted something on Facebook. Like, oh, something no cool went way. down. He was one of those white kids from, like, Colorado, like, take pictures with guns in his, like, parents' like basement. Wow. Near Did he get charged? Traps. Did he get caught? Oh, yeah, they got him. They got him. She had to testify. It was nasty. It was a really shitty Jeez, experience. That's, I was that's nineteen. Sad. That's sad. You know. That is sad. I was nineteen years old, and I'll, it was the uh-huh. weirdest thing ever to come back from spring break and go in his dorm room and like, be like wait a second, what the fuck? Yeah, that's seven wild. months in the yeah. college football, six hours away from home, and I'm, and I'm like, and then that like ba- like binded our program. To be honest, we had like our first workout back because like we thought like. What are we supposed to do? We just came back from spring break. Like, we're supposed to grind. It's our winter, you know, it's time to grind. And we're like, what would Todd do? You know? And we started right after it. We had one of the greatest workouts ever that day. I'll never forget it. Everyone felt it. It was like he was in the room. It was fucking, it was crazy. People were crying. It was nuts, you know? And he was that kid on that, the team. That had to make national news. That was yeah. 2011. 11. Wow, that's crazy, man. Todd McLean Walker. And I didn't know his middle name was McLean until uh-huh. I read his obituary because I would have called him McLean every single time yeah. I fucking saw him. You know, but he was just like at his uh, celebration of life. They had at like a ski resort in uh, Vail. And it's a picture of him in like Daisy Duke jeans on top of a mountain, you know? 
like in the, in the snow like and it was like no tears behind this beyond this point mm. you know and like that's where i lived for five months i stayed with his parents you know wow. when i when i graduated college i didn't really know what the heck i was doing i went through like that spiritual awakening hospitalization like for mental health and stuff mental health so treatment you, his parents took a liking to you that much that they oh, after yeah. their son yeah. passed wow. years Welcome. later years later wow man oh yeah that's pam crazy. and mark walker great people man that's crazy like that the most amazing people you that ever probably meet. honestly probably was therapeutic yeah. for them you know yeah. what i mean it was until they're like, all right, it's time for you to get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, they needed their own peace and quiet, too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I didn't really do much besides, mm. like, hang out and, like, do all my right. thing. I was I was working a lot, you know, but they want they they pushed me to be proactive, you know. Like, I bought a car out there. Like, I was moving. I was doing, doing good things, but I didn't know once the fall hits, season's down. dead until yeah. the winter. So, like, these people who work in restaurants, they, like, travel, yeah. you know, and I wasn't. I was I was like you know what no let me go back to Jersey I miss I miss the grind. Well, you went to college in New Hampshire and I'm from Maine. I would think New Hampshire. Well, again, this was, that was years ago. You're you're a different person, obviously, than you were when you were there. But I would think New Hampshire would be the live free or die state. Oh, it's fair. I would think New Hampshire would be right up your alley, man. Wildcat for life, man. Yeah, right. You know, UNH <laughs> was a great time. You know, it was. That's why I ended up there. I, I was a full full scholarship from UNH, U Maine, and then the Naval Academy. And okay. I, I gave a verbal com commitment to Navy on my visit with the same head coach they have University now. of Maine at Orno? Oh, yeah. They, and then they, I went, they have a pretty good football team. They're really known for their hockey team, but yeah. they have a pretty accomplished oh, football no, team. Oh, no, they're they're dogs, man. But yeah. I went 5-0 and against <sighs> them. Did you career. really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have a, a, a good history. You know, um, their head coach was a great guy, Jack Cosgrove. He came down the Tom's River, recruited me. Um, Sean McDonald was my head coach over at UNH, so there were two very similar kind of people, like New York Irish, kind of right Italian uh, people. So, but they were just they love football, you know. And Maine, when I visited UNH in Maine, I realized UNH had the musket hanging up, and when UNH and Maine play, they compete for the musket. It's like the Bryce Cal musket. It's since like nine, eighteen, you know, it's one of the oldest rivalries in college football. So they say, and. uh Maine had it empty in their locker room, to be honest. And I, I was just like, UNH's vibe was a little different. Those kids weren't fo focused on Maine. Right. They wanted to win the CAA, win the national championship. Maine's focused on getting that musket back. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bigger, bigger. So I wanted yeah. to go to UNH. I wanted to be around those kids. Right. Those kids wanted to win like a national title. Right. You know, the Maine kids at the time, they were good. They were getting dudes into the league. It was definitely a different vibe, you know, mm -hmm. a little more. You know, mm -hmm. a little more like hoodish, a little bit. Their <laughs> their program, like they're like, there's nothing to do. Yeah, you're up in Orono, Maine. There's not a lot to not do. Not much there. to do up nothing there. Nothing to do. It's freezing. No. It's freezing. Oh. Freezing. It's used to be, used to be a, a, a club just off campus. It's not there anymore. I'm sure, but uh, probably during that you time. you went there. It's called. No, you, I grew up right oh, near there, bro. Oh, That's where man. I grew up. But uh, you, you see, turned that out right. It was, it was uh, <laughs> called Jetties, and we'd always go there because all the college girls would go okay. there and stuff. But yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, no, I mean, I still had a good time. There were good people, but UNH, like, I just felt like a connection where they were on a different path. And when I showed up, they had a quarterback a few years earlier who now is the head coach, Ricky Santos. You know, he finished in like 2004, 2005, and he took UNH to the next level he got them into a quarterfinal game chip kelly was his oc um david ball was his wide receiver Corey graham was on defense Corey graham played in the nfl for a very long time um and ricky was a massachusetts kid 511 you know point guard you know kind of like an underrated walk-on in a sense maybe he got some money in the beginning but he came in as a freshman and beat Rutgers as an fcs team Wow. And then he went on like three, four years in a row as a quarterback, beating FBS teams, and then took UNH to the next level because he was just a competitor, you know. And when he set that framework and we showed up, and we took the program to the semifinals our junior and senior year. We were the number one team in the country. And since then, you know, they got everything now. Mm -hmm. They got the facilities. They got the stadium. They got the jerseys. Like, I had to fight. You know, I had cotton shorts in 2011, really? 2010. Yeah. Wow. The guy in the cage hated me. He <laughs> was so mean, Big Don, you know? Rest his soul. But uh, the next guy, Neil, was the man. Neil would hook me up, you know? 
the it's cage like, guys. See, I know what to talk about. They do your laundry and shit, yeah, right, bro? You got an extra cage, shirt here and there. Our guy, our guy was uh, Scott. We called him Scooter. He was he was gay. He was cool though. Bro. He was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had like I was real superstitious, you know. Like I had to get like extra hair, air in my helmet right before kickoff, like. I had a certain way of doing things. Like, I was weird. I had to go to the bathroom, like, 15 times before kickoff. I had to clear my whole system out. Really? I swear to God, man. I was, like, a, a nerve nerve freak, mm. you know? But once I got on the field and, like, it was about to be kickoff, I would talk to myself, like, all right, like, it's time, you know? Like, this is what the fuck I do. And so, then, for some reason, you couldn't do your, your pregame stuff or whatever. Would that mess you up? Would that throw you off? A lot of people. I think, it are just like that. it was automatic. Frank, you ever had any like th- you you always run out? Mm. That is that your thing? I, I imagine run because like day of, day of yeah, yeah. you know day of. You stuff. don't have a you don't I have do, like I, a, I, yeah, I have like a routine, you know. But it doesn't not, not something no, that gets in your head though that if you didn't do it, no, because nothing ever goes the same <laughs> usually. Right, right, right. And like COVID, right. like COVID, could, like my routine is like I always go to the cage that I'm fighting and I'll, I'll do like a run through in the morning, but less like. You know, three times I couldn't do it because of COVID and stuff. You know, I guess like super. Sometimes you get, like sometimes the the arena's far away, so you can't do it. You got to right. figure out how to get. You know. Yeah. But I but the routines are good because they kind of get you in the mode, they get you in the zone. Like I have the same warm up. I do the same warm up pretty much for every fucking workout. Yeah. You know, and then for my fights, and you do that workout. I know when my body's good or when it's not, or if I need to. I mean, you know what? Maybe I need to do a little bit extra, or I need to do a little bit of less. Mm-hmm. I know how I should feel every day. Right. I do the same one. Right. Yeah, I mean, my mom used to put, like, these little red ribbons on us when we were kids for, like, protection with, like, angels and shit. Mm. You know, like, stupid. I don't know how to explain I had to wear the certain cut sleeve uh, shirt under my shoulder pads for game day. Yeah. I was weird about stuff like that. But then, you know, when you start tearing labrums and get concussions, you're just trying to get on the field. You really don't give a shit no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then your will really comes out. Like, your spirit comes out. Like, at the end of my career, my body was, was done. But... My will, like to like right. push through and right. and and to compete when I was out there against those other kids, I had a different mental drive than those kids. You know, my body wasn't yep. responding the way I wanted it to. I had no cartilage in my left shoulder, and a high ankle sprain with a stress fracture. Right, cortisone in my ankle and my shoulder for a fourteen week season. You know, against animals I think that that happens with a lot of high level athletes, sure. especially those who have reached. Uh, you know, a pinnacle in their career or, or, you know, in Frankie sport earned a belt or whatever is, is the mind is stronger than the body. You know, age always usually comes into play and, and you never lose that winning spirit or that winning drive. And you, you stay hungry. You still, the mind still tells you I can do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was again, like, like when you asked me earlier, like, what the heck were you thinking? Like, what, why would you push yourself? Like, I'll be honest with you. I hit points in my mind in games where I was completely okay with dying. Like it was okay. I swear to God, dying a hundred percent. Really? Yeah. I look myself in the mirror before every game, knowing because like this, this was my. I didn't, physically, you were hurting that bad. No, like if if I mean when you're playing football, like kickoff, kick return, like neck injury, like it's it's quick. It, ha- it happens. Right, but you're talking about physical, not being demoralized from a loss or no, no, physically. like on yeah. that field, like from a, con- a bad concussion, yeah. having. Wow. so many and like hiding them so i can be back out there and getting another bad one like these stories happen you Jesus. know spinal cord injuries like yeah. you're putting yourself grace in deaths like baseball son baseball that's what you want to do no football is a violent game man mm-hmm. like if i if i was to advise any parent on their kid like your kid is playing a dangerous sport mm-hmm. but so is dirt biking <laughs> so is yeah, jet that's skiing very true, yeah. you know so is going to a water park like anything you you put your kid in yeah. it is going to be dangerous, but you know you can't put a kid in a bubble. Like I nah, totally yeah. agree with that. You know, you know if they want to do it. That's my thing. If you're passionate about it. You're into it. I'm, I'm I'll probably support you. Provide the knowledge that you can. Like now that I have these understandings, like I, that's why I try to do with my business with athletes. Like mm-hmm. like think about your long term stuff. You know, like take care of yourself kind of thing. Whereas when I was an athlete, my I couldn't hear that until it was too late. Sure. <laughs> You know, and then my career was literally over. Like, I could not play football anymore. It was over. It, t- it was done. I did my pro day. I tried, right. you know, but you have no cartilage in your shoulder. Like, how the hell are you supposed Speaking to? Speaking of off topic a little bit or a little off topic, I always love to get Frankie's take. And I know you're a UFC fan. Um, Cheeto Vera, Dominic Cruz fought this past weekend. Thought they both really looked good. Dom's 38, 39. Still looked really good. Obviously got lost, but uh, Cheeto looked really good. I mean, that was a really clean 
head kick he got him with. Um, f- found a way is what you always say. But what, what was your take on that fight? I thought yeah. they both looked great. I, you know, I thought. Yeah, I thought they. I mean, Cheeto. That's kind of how Cheeto goes. Gets down. You know, he doesn't really look great in fights and finds ways to to win or capitalizes in every. I thought round. he was patient. He looked very. Yeah, patient. He's patient. That's what it is. Yeah. I don't want to say he doesn't look great. Yeah. He's patient. But I felt like uh, volume matters, and, and, and Cruz was bringing the volume the right. whole time so, and scoring. But, like, Cheeto would drop him real quick. It was like a flash drop. You know what I mean? It's like, boom, boom, jump right out. It's like, are those really that substantial? I mean, if you, in a boxing world, it's a knockdown. You got a 10-8, all that bullshit. But in MMA, I don't know, bro. Right. So, really, I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter because the fight got finished. Mm. But I'm saying up until that point. You could say Dom was winning that fight. You oh. could. You could, but then you could also say Cheeto was because he got dropped three times. But it's kind of wild, dude. Cheeto did that. I mean, he caught me with that. He didn't drop me with any punches. Big kick. And actually, I went and looked. I fucking parried it. But he kept throwing it kind of like here. So I was parrying it. And then he here, I still parried it, but not enough force. Mm-hmm. I got through. Anyway. But like, yo, even against Rob Font, you know, he dropped him every like every round to make it. Right. You know, close a closer fight than it really was, I think, yeah, or, yeah. or to put it in his favor. And then he, of course, he got the finish. So and that hit him as well. So the fact that he could do that, he, he's uh, maybe he's just taking what he sees, downloading it, and boom, finding a way to get get through. You know, hot hands. I think I I do believe in momentum in sports. Mm-hmm. You know, like the tide goes with with momentum most times. You know, I mean, certainly you can say he's a very confident fighter, but Dominic Cruz is a very confident fighter too, and. I just thought they both looked really, really great. Nothing bad to say about Dominic Dom Cruz gonna, at all. I thought you yeah. see him start taking his gloves off. I thought he was gonna retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's had a few tough fights his last few fights, right? He takes him like a champ, though. He never yeah, makes he's, excuses. He's class act, he's a class, he's a class act. act. I, know, I truly he's a warrior. I, I love watching the guy fight, but I think he's an amazing commentator. He's got a long future ahead of him he knows this but he's got a way you don't think so you don't agree no i do i do i think he definitely he knows his shit he does he's definitely prepared all that stuff i just think sometimes the way he is with his uh broadcast partners is a little, yeah, little, I, crazy I a little disrespectful right you know like throws them under the bus left them right. i'm like yeah and i felt like dude you seen bisming and, and dc were like dominator goes down like, I, think they, I think they took a little fucking uh, enjoyment Enjoy in that it, has he honest. gone at oh yeah he has gone at Bisbang you're right but he's definitely gone at Cormier no I sure. sh- I've heard both times yeah. where he's gone like you know he'll have like little tip like yeah. little arguments in I the middle of fucking he, fights yeah. with, with both of those guys yeah so Frank could you see yourself ever commentating Hell I yeah. used to comment I've commentated for Brave I think I could now I never I don't like doing it when I'm fighting so yeah I think I could try it i don't know i don't know if i want to do it honestly what what a lot. what what is it that doesn't appeal to you the traveling for well that stuff yeah it, like, if it was going to do it for the ufc it'd be right. like you know you're traveling all the fucking time this and that um but even if i did it for like another one like another organization i don't know like you have like, i mean it's work it's work you're, you're working you have to kind of like be cheesy and do this and do that. Yeah. Like I'm not. I don't know if I could. I want to do that. I'm not, not that thing. guy. Obviously, you know? you're not Hollywood. Yeah. Obviously, the stand up was great. By the way, I'm proud of the guy. I loved that. it. Uh, John Anik, um, obviously, he's a man, he's the he, best, the best. Very well yeah, researched. Bro. He might, you know, well researched. He's just his time, everything yeah. is his cadence. Yeah. However he does it, does it. But like, but he might be one of the best, like among all sports. Would not disagree you know? with that. Would not yeah. disagree. I see he did a he did a little video obviously he posted it so everybody can watch it but um on on his his fighter cards that he keeps like yeah. all handwritten he had, like, yeah, yeah he like has his, his like, uh, in de- uh, like little tidbits a Rolodex of, of, yeah, of little thousands, tidbits of yeah. fighters that you wouldn't even fucking dog's name or what you know what I mean he's, he's awesome bro he's, he's always great like, bro he's great Santino Francesca and Valentina's dad's fighting yeah, you know what yeah, I mean he yep. like remembers shit like that yep. dude he's he's a, he's phenomenal he, bro. he's well researched you know that yeah. I would think with commentating that's a big part of it bro, I started before with, you get there I. He the used to do MMA movie. Live. It was on ESPN. This is before, I think it was on ESPN. MMA Live was like an internet show, maybe. And I've done that with him way back. Is bro. that right? Fucking way back. And that's where he, he kind of, I think that's where he started. Wow. I mean, I'm sure that's, not if he's where he started, but he was there for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And Go, when Goldberg left, he went over to where? He still commentates, right? He was gone for a while. He I, I, Is he back with, um? Ba- not I think he's B- Bellator. He Bellator, Bellator. Bellator, right? you're right. He's Bellator, Bellator, yeah. yeah. Yep. A lot of guys going to bare knuckle, man. A lot of guys. Who? Um, well, uh Mike um Venom Page. 
Well, no, the the Venom well, page he's only, is coming he's only, up. He, yeah, there, but Bellator let him just because it's in London. Oh, he's still contracted. He's the, yeah, he oh. let him go fight one fight. Is he fighting Perry? He is. Man, that's kind of interesting. That's very interesting, man. Yeah. What about Jake Paul? I gotta hear your perspective um, on Jake Paul. I think I think he could crack. I mean, he's a fucking. He could fight. He hasn't fought a boxer yet, but uh, yeah, I, I give him credit for doing what he's doing. I don't blame him. He could definitely. Um, he tra- it seems like he trains. He's capitalizing, and like you know, everyone's like, "Oh, the YouTube. He's not. He's been training boxing for fucking two or three years now. He's a, he's a boxer now. You know, mm-hmm. gotta give him that. Making money. Well, he's making money. That's for sure. I don't think he needed the box to make money either. But yeah, he's true. Doing Would it. you say that though, Frank? Like, obviously, he's he's won his fights. Would you say he's a boxer if he'd been doing it for two or three years and just taking loss after loss? Would he be a, f- a boxer then? What if he beat if he fought no, boxers and law, took a loss? No, if just no. his his resume to date were all losses. You said he's been doing it two or three years. Obviously, he's a boxer. If they were all losses, would you call him a boxer? I'm just saying he like it's not like he's he's not a YouTuber. He's, he's been boxing for three years. Can't be like oh this guy's a YouTuber. He's fighting. Dude, he's been training boxing for three right, years. Right. That's what I mean. How that's what I mean. He's, I see, he's a yeah. boxer. Not n- nothing to do with his wins or losses. Just because he's been doing it. He's, I mean, he seems like he's tr- he's wants to be good at it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and I mean he's he's knocked every person out. He's fought that kind of not really easy to no, do. No, except one guy. Except the one guy. I think the KSI. The KSI guy. Yeah. First fight. Yeah. True. Knocking out Tyrone Woodley is, that's, listen, you got to give the yeah, guy And he didn't knock out Tyrone him. the first time either. So, yeah. He yeah. collapsed them too. Like, yeah, he put them yeah, out, yeah, you know? Yeah, that like, was that wasn't just like. Ben, he, ha- ben Askren, to me, Frankie differs from me a little bit. That wasn't that surprising to me at all. But Not at all. That guy, I, I don't even know how he was a good fighter, to be right, honest. Right. Like, he never really won a fight in the UFC. It didn't look, it looked like yeah, he won he was one last good. payday for that he last one. Before before the like UFC. He beat Robbie. He beat Robbie. Robbie. Did he though? I mean, he yeah, did. He of. did. He, okay, he beat Robbie. He was getting mangled as though, you say. A bit, right? You have yeah, to, yeah, you have yeah. to accept the outcome. Is a damage. Any, yeah. any, you yeah, have any to accept the outcome on the fight. But I don't think he beat Robbie. I think that was a way early yeah, stoppage. Yeah. I mean, and I think everybody out. agrees it that it was. Yeah, you know? agree. Agree. Like he was Robbie the, the was funky whatever on, out in like that other league. Well, I mean, he won one FC. He won Bellator. He's definitely skilled, man. He just that, uh, he, he has no. He was skilled on the ground no for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to get the fight to the I'm ground. I'm not talking shit about the guy. He's a skilled guy, but in in MMA, he, he wasn't see. on the same level as everybody else because he didn't have that stand up game. And then he goes over and and you know took 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 the fight on against Logan Paul, but he wasn't a stand up fighter and didn't to me it didn't look like he no. Jake Paul. Sorry, Jake Paul. It did not look like he even trained for that, bro. He showed it. No, he looked it like he was way out of shape. Looked You're like right. he just wanted a payday to me. Yeah, and he, and he like, really, dude, he really, dude, really, really should have trained with his for ego, that for sure. Because that could have led into other fights. You know what I mean? He could have could have well, kept collecting. Yeah, you know, yeah, it could have been a, there could have been you know a, a follow up fight to that if he won that. You know, with the a bigger UFC, payday. The UFC's changed so much. Like, look at like this middleweight title fight coming up like alex Pereira and, yeah. and israel adesanya like yeah. that dude is a monster yeah. like, yes. he weighs israel. in night of the fight 220 israel's uh, only uh, loss uh, Pereira. i know yeah. i know That's he's a, a scary dude bro mm-hmm. the yeah. mma has changed so fast these guys coming in they're like wizards with their feet and they're saying uh, he's you know? as, he, they're saying he's as talented as israel on his feet that yeah, muay thai yeah, him twice that yeah. muay thai kickboxing style yeah. with like ground pound is like that's like the lethal combo nowadays. Yeah. Like, think about all like the champions at the highest level: mm-hmm. Jose Aldo, you know, John Jones. Like the people who like retain that title for a long duration, they can put someone out, kicking them upside their head. And he's going to come in with a certain amount of confidence that other fighters didn't because he beat him. You know what I mean? It's a crazy fight. It was definitely one I'll be. I just wonder if MMA is. I, I didn't see. But the, it is the, MMA. I, I didn't see the. Uh, it's kickboxing and MMA are two yeah, different I didn't worlds, see man. The fight, so no I don't question. Know. And I think the f- I think they were close fights. He caught though. him. He caught him. That's all. Yeah. He got caught. You know. What about he's Nick? Human. Nick versus Chimaev. I mean, I, he's a he, Nate. Nate <sighs> is excuse me. Nate, huge underdog in that mm-hmm. fight. Do you yeah. think that? Do you think those betting odds are? Realistic? I lose every time I bet these fights, so I don't think I should touch any of them. I don't. I don't, I don't I think. Lose, I don't think you could make Nate that big of a dog. Well, yeah. Nate, not Nate. He's a huge underdog. Uh, yeah, Nate can fight. He yeah, can fight anybody yeah. any day, like, any dude, place. I imagine, like I don't know, like this is, this guy gets all crazy, gets anxiety, gets to him fighting Nate because it's gonna be such a big fight. Blows Nate, his energy. Nate's talking shit. Nate's, Nate's talking leaking shit. blood. Four yeah, rounds. Just like bah, 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 bah. Uh, You know, I could see that happen. Yeah. Dude. I, that'd be fucking amazing. That guy tired. Yeah, 
I, mean, yeah. I don't know. He got, suppose he got a little. I didn't. I mean, he's a monster. He got a little tired fighting Gil. Yeah, Gilbert, he did. You know? he did. That was a real. Tap. But he took some. He took some damage. But yeah. that, that's that's the cream of the crop yeah. that he fought with. That was yeah, his first yeah. like real, real. That test, was a real say. test for him, and, and he, he took and damage, he, and he showed up. They kind of took a risk did. with that. He did. Yeah. Like Frankie said that he did look gassed. He did look gassed. Mm-hmm. So, and Nate doesn't really gas. Every division's know? crazy. Yep. Every oh, yeah. division's crazy. Yeah. It's it's. Yeah, deep. Pagano has one, one fight left on his contract. I need to oh, see him and John Jones, oh, man. Them two need we'll a love fight. to see that. Them I think they're really fight. trying to do Jones and uh, Stipe. I think I think that's the one they're trying to put together. That'll be a good fight. Yeah. That'll be a good intro. Fight. End of the year, maybe. You know, every every class, every I'm I, I love it. I think it's it's probably it, yeah, it's my favorite sport, hundred mm-hmm. percent. It's my most watched sport. My it's most really my sport. only sport. Yeah. I don't really watch anything. I, I watch, watch interviews. I watch on a little YouTube. football. But. Like I'm so invested in different. I get like a weirdo. Like I watch the vlogs and stuff. The UFC vlogs. You know what I'm saying? No, what's that? V- oh, vlogs or whatever oh. the the little episodes they do leading like, into the like, fights. Yeah, like uh, oh, what are they called? Um, embedded. Exactly. Embedded. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I love them. Okay. I think it, you get to know he's, the characters. He said vlogs. Yeah, vlogs, vlogs. video logs. <laughs> they are vlogs. I know, I know, I know, I know. If I, I had said never, that, the whole show would have ground I, to a halt. I never heard v. I never heard vlogs. Vlogs. Video logs. I, don't I know. get it. No, you're right. Vlogs. <laughs> vlogs. Should I said vlogs? You would have known that. Roger leaves. <laughs> vlogs. <laughs> That's great. So um, let's talk about the other name you go by. Yahweh the Cosmo. Where did where did you get that? Yahweh does that mean God? What is Yahweh? Yahweh means I am in Hebrew. I am. I am and Yahweh. So Yahweh. H- how did you come to? Did somebody give you that? Were you given that name when you were over there? Or? When I went through like the second phase of my awakening, it was a whole summer after. I didn't get hospitalized. I was like, wait a second, this is familiar. I'm gonna, I'm cool. Like this is what it is. This is how I see the world. You know, I was uh, at a friend's house. I got kicked out of my house at the time. And uh, my friend's parent, very, very sophisticated, like, educated guy, like, on his own from from the Bronx. And he was talking about this word Yahweh. And I started writing in poems or whatever, and I would write Yahweh at the bottom because I liked that expression, I am, because that's how I felt at the time. Like, I just am. I am who I am. Like, I don't know. You know, it was weird times, you know. And then the Cosmo was in my bloodline, and I didn't like when people said Yahweh, Yahweh, like that's a Hebrew God, that's a Judaism God. I was like, that's not why I'm using it. You know, it was kind of like given to me. And then the Cosmo I chose because it's in my bloodline. It means universal twin. So the name means I am the universal twin. You know, that's all. Universal twin. Yeah. I'm like the twin who? of the universe. Twin of the universe. Yeah, like the twin of the universe. I got you. As a writer in that, in that space. You're a Gemini? In the Vedic astrology, when I studied with the, the yogi, I was a Gemini mm-hmm. in their in their charts. But in the Western astrology, I'm I'm a Virgo, September. How much faith belief do you put in that in in astrology and what it says about us and what it says? Well, like, you know, I'm a Gemini, so they say that I have two personalities, and you know, or not that I, but the Gemini's do. I wouldn't say that that's completely inaccurate, by the way. But how much faith do you put in that? I just think it varies. I, I definitely think it, it is a good measurement. It comes from ancient times. They did utilize them as ways to make sense of, you know, the soul when it comes to earth and, like, your personality and things you're connected to because when you take form, the universe is, everything's in certain places. So that's kind of why they do that. Mm-hmm. Like, at least that's, that's what the yogi taught me. I just don't, I don't know. I, I just think we, we, we're attracted to what we like, you know? You said you're a Gemini in in what in the in in the the Vedas in the 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 four books of knowledge from from uh, Atharva Veda. Is that because their calendar differs yeah. from our calendar? The way he measures it is based <laughs> off of like down to the minute. Gotcha. You're born, and he does like a whole star chart reading, and and in that moment, your energy is associated with a certain, um, you know, symbol. I guess yeah. you could say. And out there, I'm Gemini. And and a lot of those things I do resonate with. But then also the Virgo things I do too, you know? So it's like I don't spend too much time on those uh, Zodiac signs. From that astrology standpoint where yeah. my, my birthday falls in the calendar, I'm a Gemini. But 
most of the people I've dated call me a fucking bipolar fuck. So <laughs> Roger's two personalities <laughs> are dumb and dumber. <laughs> Nailed it. I would say that's accurate. I would say Listen, that's man, accurate. if if you have to get mad and, and and get angry, then I don't know. I think I don't think the person understands you. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't think you should even have to like get mad. I feel like that like demasculates us as men. You know, getting mad. A hundred percent. I've worked on that. Very well, hard. no, not not saying I'm perfect. I'm right. talking about just in terms of a relationship with a woman. Like yeah, yeah. Two people working together. Right. Like you know each other's good parts. You know your bad stuff. You sure. know what you're working on. Like, if my fiance is, like, trying to get me mad, like, I just think that demasculates me. And if I'm trying to get her mad, oh, no. it, like, defeminizes her. If oh, she's yeah. getting all angry yeah. and I'm out loud and I'm angry, like, it just, like, changes who you are a little right. bit in your relationship. Of course. Because you, yeah, you can't forget what's said, right? Yeah. yeah, you can move on. You forget. Right. But if you could just, like, be like a lion. Like, lions don't get angry unless they have to kill, right? They just chill. You know? Lions don't fight with each other. Male lions don't fight for dominance. Absolutely, they got yeah. it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got probably it for for mating, right? Yeah. In well, territory, that's what, that's what but most, there's an understanding. Most of us men fight for, but there's an understanding amongst them of who's the dog, like who's the head honcho. Don't fuck with that guy. Like I, that that hunt that has yeah, to. Yeah, but exist. there's always an up and coming dog that's trying to get. You know, like there's a there's a. There's the the alpha, they the old, the old one, but then there's there's the outsider roaming around that's kind of up and coming. He's the young buck, or not the young buck, but the young lion, and he wants to take over the the harem of uh, lionesses. And are you talking about Lion King? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I've definitely watched that because I have kids, but no. <laughs> That's great. No, I'm just talking about in every animal kingdom in the world. It's, yeah. it's the the top dog is always challenged, you know. But the Sphinx in Egypt is part lion, you know, and they have it facing the the a lion astrology in the stars, like a lion gate of stars. They have the Sphinx facing. Okay, it's, so, it's insane. So and what does that mean, though? The Sphinx is half lion, half human. Okay, and that that embodiment is like like being poised like a lion, like lions, like that posture, laying down like that, like. They know they're the king, God, you yeah. know, and and for the, those people of that time, they want to represent their consciousness aligned with those higher dimensions, right? Which mm-hmm. are essentially are like geometric, sacred geometry forms, mm-hmm. like are like interweaved in different dim- that that uh, that are determined as different dimensions, you know. Understood. Yeah. In closing, can you, uh, if someone wanted to buy your book, first of all, where where can they find it? I know you can find it on Amazon because I looked it up. Um, but can you talk about what it embodies and what it talks about? Um, and if, you know, obviously, if someone wanted to purchase it, can you For mention sure. where they where they could get it? For sure, yeah. I uh, I have a little library section on my website s three dot guru. It's my business website. Um, I kind of had it a little inactive lately, my books, because I just I haven't really been selling much of them. To be honest, I. Like I said, they just, I gift them to people, you know, if I make my money back, that's cool. But to me, these are investments for the future. Um, but yeah, you can always go on that website. You can contact me there. Um, I will be providing a purchase link for all these books there. Um, but it's kind of like a slow, steady thing. You know, it's kind of like word of mouth. I was doing like DMs through Instagram, you know, Venmo, whatever. But where can people find you on Instagram? S3 underscore guru. That's my business page. With and your website. And my website, s3.guru. Cool. Very, very interchangeable. Very. Now, four books out now. Are you working on another book? you have oh, an yeah. idea for another book? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm working on a few. I'm working on one called I Am Ibis, the book of Tahuti. Um, and it's kind of like 81 poems devoted to the sacred Ibis of Egypt, who was like the, the, the god of wisdom. And I have like all these NFT drawings from an artist from Russia, believe it or not, actually from Ukraine. Um, mm, fuck that up. Yeah, sorry, I did <laughs> fuck that up. <laughs> no, this this pendant's from an artist from Russia. That's why I fucked that up. Um, but uh, which is kind of crazy. I have two spiritual things like associated with my life from Russia and Ukraine. Uh-huh. Like who would have fucking thought, you know? Um, and she had to stop working on the project for like a month because of the war. Wow. It was fucking crazy. But she sent me all these, like, paintings of, like, the ibis, like, cannabis plants, the pyramids, and I have them all, you know? And, like, different NFTs of all the different deities, like Anubis, Osiris, mm. you know? 
and I want to use those with the poems, you know. And then from there, there's a third book to the Yaku and Doni series I have to write in, in Egypt. I have to go to Egypt and write it. What and why is that? Well, I wrote Yaku and Doni visit Central Park in New York. You know, I went to Central Park, and then I wrote it from that's from there. That's where Yaku and Doni come from. If you want to know the God's honest truth, I went to Central Park. Um, dibble dabbled in some, uh, you know, psychedelics. Sure just to walk around New York City and I met a person named Yaku and I met a person named Doni and I wrote the names down in my phone because I liked them and then I liked the ibis bird and I liked the raven and I used them as two symbols to represent like my consciousness my upper consciousness and my lower consciousness and that's Yaku and Doni <laughs> you know and then that's from Central Park and then Doni and Yaku hit the Himalayas is when I went to Nepal and then like I started using the, the guide of the ibis as like the Gemini, the split personality. Now, was it specifically just the names you liked of these individuals, or you actually got stories. to know the individuals and the stories yeah. behind them? Yeah. That's interesting. Doni was a homeless bum in New York City who was, like, falling on the street, and people were, like, trying to help him out, put money in his pocket. Yeah. I think I made him, like, 20 bucks. And I was like, where you got to go, sir? He's like, go cross over to that garbage can. I was like, all right, I'll walk you over. Walked him over. I was like, what's your name? He's like, Doni. <laughs> And I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And then I went into the Met Museum, and a dude working there, his name was Yaku. And I was just talking to him about Egypt, you know? And, like, I just liked those names. And then Yaku and Doni turned into this, like, I was sitting in a barbershop. I wrote that story in 28 minutes, you know? And then I went to Nepal, and every day I was there for the first, like, nine days, I wrote Doni and Yaku hit the Himalayas. I took my experiences from Nepal with the yogi, and I put it into a story. I turned the yogi into a mountain cow. Now, was that a one-day interaction with those two people that impacted you enough to write? Yeah. You literally just had one day? That spent? one time. Wow. On LSD. Wow. Miss LS Daisy. Wow. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. A, a, a lot of very magical, very spiritual things have been done on LSD. Yeah, Some that's where Yaku and Doni come written, from. Performances have been done, and yeah, it's uh, it's crazy never done it but maybe i'd be more uh, yeah it was a different time you know now i'm on the, the psilocybin like that would sure. be more of the idea you know lsd is kind of like you know you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit you think, know you think it depends right on your reach to your source like it, i guess yeah you yeah. know like you never know what people do to those things whereas a mushroom i'm looking at that thing i see it yeah, what can what can yeah. be done to LSD? I don't know much about it. obviously well, I know, but you know you know i know what lsd really is though it's it's uh ergot no, ergot, ergot? Is, ergot is like a, a mold it's like a mold yeah. that's what he got LSD it was, from I thought it was like a combination of like DMT no uh -uh. no um, it's like originally I think they got LSD from a mold originally really yeah and uh they did a lot of testing on it back <clears throat> in the day I know a lot of military testing with LSD right yeah. I mean you watch Stranger Things right yeah. why is that based uh, on no, LSD I, I don't really I mean I, I haven't watched it actually well I mean yeah if Stranger you, Things is great, but I never got 11, the connection to LSD. They're, they're, they're all by 11. I suppose, yeah. 11's mom I was suppose. put on psychedelics. I well, suppose, yeah. Do, do, you, know? uh, do you hear, uh, actually I heard, I don't know, probably one of the wrong podcasts, but they say the Salem Witch Trials, you know what they are, right? Yeah, of course coincide with like some permafrost or some frost or some weather event that created all the crops to get mold, essentially ergot on it. And they said that pretty much that the timeline coincided with, with that time when it started and stopped. Those Salem Witch Trials. They think those women might have just been... Been on fucking eat, tripping, tripping face off, off saying, oh, yeah. saying crazy shit. And they're fucking oh, yeah. getting... Or the people even killing them might have been like, Charles fuck, I seen this bitch flying. Yeah. She was just flying. Nah, motherfucker, he was just eating some acid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You've heard stories. Ketamine. People have yeah, yeah. ketamine. Yeah. They thought they were going to die. That's, that's, that's used for... Uh, tr um, cat drink was or no no but i mean yeah but it's also used for, as like a um like for mental health and stuff yeah oh, really yeah i, I, and, thought, yeah. I thought it only had a trip, veterinarian trip oh, yeah. On, kind of, oh yeah kind of, yeah yeah as, as no but like they iv it sure. wow and really it's like um yeah it's like doctor you know um like you go to a doctor and they put it up on you and they they have someone watching you and everything wow oh, i thought it only yeah, had ketamine a, mdma um, no dude ketamine mdma LSD, psilocybin. It's actually a thing on, uh, I don't know if it's on ketamine, but there's a documentary on uh, um, 
Netflix right now. It's like how to how to change mm-hmm. the mind or something. Yeah. It has LSD, like it has uh, psilocybin. I DMT I did one time. That's all I needed. And talk about dimensions. If you want to see them physically, yeah. you can you could take you DMT. Can get there. You see those lines on the wall? The second I exhaled, it turned into like melting. It just melted. The whole yeah. wall just melted away. Are you supposed to close your eyes? I was. I see. I was. I was by myself. I was in Colorado. Yeah. It was from somebody I met at a a bluegrass festival. You know, because I did DNT, I didn't get all the way there. You know, because they talk about you got to get all the way. Oh there. no, I I once I exit, I hit it out of a bong. I forgot that it wasn't weed. Like it was LSD. It was uh, DMT. So I like ripped it. I totally forgot. You're supposed it in the to. Moment. You're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I ripped it, and once I exhaled, literally my eye, the walls melted. My hands turned into pink flowers. They had like breathing spores on them. I was freaking out. I was like, I thought I was, and it felt like I was dying. And I was by myself, and I like. Is that the common Which effect? Because I, no, no, no. I wouldn't want to experience it. Well, no. well go ahead. and then I like fought it a little bit. I realized that I'm fighting my existence. Like that's what DMT helped with in that moment. And then I calmed down. I laid down. I started doing the ohm, you know. Humming. Yeah, just ohm yeah. over and over on my bed. And then that's when I started getting some visuals inside my brain. Gotcha. How long it lasts? It felt like forever, but probably like ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Then once it was gone, it was like, wait, how long ago that that, that that happened? So long, my brain like caught back up with uh, normal time. Mm. But that time that you were in was like every micro atom vibrating. Your consciousness was molding with that plane. But there's like two different kinds of DMT. There's like DMT, and there's like the toad. Yeah, no, like, I did like these little crystals. That, yeah, you like, probably were, like, regular dust, DMT, like, sandy. but there's one, the Toad, the MD, M5AO or something. It's like the Toad. I heard about the Toad. That one is like... I thought that's from a frog. Isn't yeah, that from a frog? Well, I think so, but... Same family, maybe? Yeah, yeah, but it's a little like different. Like ayahuasca is its own branch, I guess, uh, Well, ayahuasca, DMT. I think, is... Uh, uh, ayahuasca is, it more, is it's like not cactus root, right? But what's the... What's no, the, that's... Peyote. Peyote. What yeah. is it? Yeah. Ayahuasca is the <laughs> tree frog thing you did? <laughs> no, no. Ayahuasca is a root. Is a root. What, I believe. what is the what yeah. is the tree frog? That's Kamba. Kamba. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that that actually but, has uh, a but medical the, purpose, right? That's yeah. to clean your lymphatic yeah. system out. I guess that's what they it's say. Not to get. It's not to get an enjoyable. No, eye, no, right? no, no, yeah. no, no, not at all. You literally. But like the, the other one, the de- the other de- the other the toad supposedly says makes you feel like you go away. In other words, you're dying, but yeah. you're okay with it, and wow. then you see a white, a crazy white light. Everyone everyone says they see a crazy white light, and that kind of makes sense because when you die, everyone's ever say I've seen this white light, mm. and that could be DMT. They say DMT is in us at all times. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, know? that methyltryptamine that was crazy, yeah. man. I got a lot of signs. I I, I heard Catman do before I went. Um, I saw a little hand. I was like, "Come hither," you know. I saw an emerald crystal in my brain that had like all the music of the universe and knowledge, and it was in everyone's brain. I saw so many things fast, you know. And and you're able to retain that memory of it. That's oh yeah, it was profound. Mm-hmm. I only needed it one time. I see, like um, along my path when I lost my mind, it was never induced from a psychedelic other than cannabis, you know. Um, I never did a mushroom. I never did LSD. I never did anything. Um, I never went to a sweat ceremony. I never went to a prayer ceremony. Nothing to like, or at ayahuasca. Like nothing to bash anyone who has chose that path in the Western world. It's a very decorative path of spirituality. I chose the. I was suffering. You know, mm. make sense of this. There's there's religions here. You guys studied it. I who are you people? Jesus, you exist. Show me. Mm. All right, like I'll go show me this knowledge like i really wanted to know and it led to just you know me awakening and then developing a practice and a devotion like meditating breathing consciously eating differently changing the way i behave the best i possibly can understanding like you're not perfect but you can strive for it whereas when i was a football player perfection was everything so to step away from that world was like like chains breaking you know and uh you know I just kind of attest a lot of this to the plant life, to be honest. If it really wasn't for cannabis, I'm a medical marijuana patient. Like, I couldn't tell you, like, the brain trauma and the CTE, all that stuff. It's real, you know? It's really real. And I know it because I feel it. Like, I could feel, you know, I go on a, I go parasailing and I have symptoms, like, stupid stuff. Like, they say it's, like, concrete filling up, like, a pipe. Like, your what, neurons. What do you mean you go parasailing and you have feelings? What do you mean? I went parasailing and I threw up 500 feet in the air. Really? Just from like the movement. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't that just be motion sickness? No. 
Nah, brain no. trauma. Really? Yeah, I can't go on roller coasters. You ever had your brain mapped? I've had, I don't know what mapped is. I've had CAT scans and I had an MRI. That's and, where they test like that. nerve conductivity, I guess. And your My brain's healthy. You know, I'm yeah. good. I just know that from head trauma, just like you cut your skin, there's a scar. Sure. There's tau proteins. It just is what it is, but you can zap them through energy, work, movement, running, yeah. thinking, moving thoughts of feelings, using them to drive thoughts. That's like, that's what alchemy is. Roger's fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going home to lay on the couch after this. I'm yeah, like you have to up. zap the proteins, you know. Like I I believe when I leave the earth one day and they could take my brain, like I, my goal is to have no proteins in there. Just to say that what Spoga X, what I do is true. It works. Like it's a real functioning device that you can use every day mm -hmm. for your own practice as an athlete and as a person whereas the western path is right you get drawn to a religion you get drawn to a ceremony you get drawn to which is great like there's nothing wrong with that i'm not like a, putting down any religions but to go study all religions embrace all religions i feel like is so like fulfilling for me having like fell face on my flat you know fell fall right on your face like done like i was i was same thing as you i got the semicolon right here you know i did three months outpatient like i was running up and down in the hallways of a mental health unit in in new hampshire doing push-ups in my room really <laughs> yeah i walked wow. down the garden state Har Pi parkway for four and a half hours really you know, from exit 89 to exit 100 they called it a drug-induced psychosis episode but i had no drugs in my system it was from meditation and from this stuff that was happening within me that I didn't like know. Like putting yourself in danger, like in the middle of the lane or on the side of the road or what? No, I was on the side of the road, then I ran across the four lanes. Well, a guy just died today on Route 37. Mm -hmm. wow. right. they, they got a call on him because he was in the eastbound lane. By the time they got oh, there. Oh, yeah, it felt like death was close. By the time they, they responded to it. Was it was scary. He was in the westbound lane and he'd been killed at 5.30 yeah. this morning. I don't I know what I was it. thinking, dude. I was, I was, it was like when I did eventually do LSD, I realized like, holy shit, this is what was happening to me. Right. Like all these chemicals released in my brain naturally. And I was just a puppet <laughs> to what was experience. What I was experiencing. I, was, I thought I was Jesus Christ. I thought I was God. I thought everything was God on no drugs, no drugs. Wow. Just from three months of meditation post football career for the first time in my life since I was seven. Wow. 23 years old for three straight months i just started smoking pot meditating devoting myself to this new thing changing now, my diet you said you were in a mental whatever you want to call it institution or oh, whatever yeah. place typically they medicate the fuck out of you when oh they they, they put so many pills into my system man i was like a zombie in that place yeah, i didn't eat their food it was bad and then when i came home i didn't leave my bed for 40 days wow. i couldn't move wow. from depression like i was it was so manic the, the experience those it was 15 days long i didn't sleep for 15 days and i was hospitalized twice you remember everybody remembers the famous tom cruise interview right where he said you know that um medication he kind of went up against big pharma this is uh, this got to be 15 years ago it's kind of a famous interview when people called him crazy and a lunatic now uh, some mm -hmm. studies recently came out that show that those those drugs to affect your serotonin levels don't actually affect your serotonin levels. Yeah, no, they were, no, 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 they were of, saying they don't think serotonin has to do with depression. So, yeah, okay, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. But it, it, were, it would serotonin it is would psilocybin yeah. in molecular form, just in different forms, like down to the biology. If you were to put them under a microscope, psilocybin and serotonin are identical, mm -hmm. just like THC and anandamide in the but human those, body those are identical. Medications he was talking about, he was talking about are. Yeah. Serotonin, serotonin enhancers, right. correct? Mm, it's SSRIs, yeah. Well, right. Mm -hmm. So they they don't necessarily treat the but condition. What, yeah, but what they thought they thought it did because they thought it, but apparently it doesn't, right? Right. But what about doesn't dopamine the happy, the happy uh, hormone? I'm the motivating horm reward, folding your clothes, doing your but the it's dishes. Happy, happy, anything happy. It's just a reward. It's a reward molecule. It's like when you do your dishes when you fold your clothes things that are just like naturally rewarding you know so they just put it in like a pill format I, they had me on a dopamine receptor pill mm -hmm. and it, it was stabilizing my mood but my thoughts and my understanding of it it was doing nothing for and that's where my issue was what helped me was 40 days i didn't leave the bed i got down to like 170 pounds 
It really was really scary shit. And then I got prescribed, uh, what's the blackout pill to make you go to sleep? Ambien? Ambien. I convinced the doctor, like, I need this to sleep. So now I had a whole pill, whole thing of Ambien. I was on that for a while. And I was dealing with mental health, depression, where I could have just taken the whole thing and swallowed it if I wasn't strong enough, you know? Every night I looked at it, I was like, and those thoughts were there. But in my mind, I realized the difference between reality and what my brain was saying. Yeah. And, like, what I'm in control of in my story like what i can do to myself like this is i this is me like you know what i'm saying like if i gotta wipe my ass i gotta wipe my ass <laughs> if i gotta eat i gotta eat you know what i'm saying if i gotta sleep i gotta sleep i through, can't hurt myself through my experience you know, of i don't know how to medication and antidepressants and ambient and through my experience my personal experience i came out of that thinking that medication is not the answer for me that's not gonna fix it didn't fix any of my problems no i don't even think it momentarily helped me to be quite honest with you no and i had nights exactly what you were talking yeah about, man it's staring, scary shit at that bottle saying, it tests your will my it's problems soul. will all go away if i just suck that yeah, bottle doesn't down. help the hard ons no, no, I mean, I'm I'm not. When you're that. depressed, brother, that's your last thing you're thinking about. But then you're like, oh, what you're if? The blue you, pill? You think about <sighs> like your story. You think about what people are thinking. Like, I couldn't. I, I, it wasn't me. It right. wasn't me. It was something else, Correct. and I wasn't familiar with it. And then when I went to outpatient for three months, five days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and I saw alcoholics, and I saw heroin addicts, and I saw cocaine, I saw everything. And I was just like, man. My, I'm not. It's not that bad. Puts things in. I smoke some pot and I meditate and walk down the highway. That almost happens to everybody. I hated time. myself for a while for that. Like yeah. as an athlete, right? You've you've lost a fight. I'm sure you probably like were down on yourself about it. Like yeah. I walked down the Grand State Parkway for four and a half hours. Like why the fuck did I do that? Like I was so like like what the fuck was I thinking? Like I was so like pissed off at myself as it like a person. Yeah. And then when I'm around these people, I'm like, this guy. You know, he just overdosed last week and his kid's dead from overdose. Mm. You know, his yeah. wife's just trying to keep him alive. This lady told me to stop bringing a glass bottle with my water because it's reminding her of alcohol. This kid's bipolar cursing off this girl about her sex issue. Yo, it was crazy, mm. dude. Honestly, mm, I loved it. And it was all processing, processing them providing a space for me to talk about my family. Like, I would never talk about problems with my family to people. You know, I just bottled it. Now I'm going to therapy and it's like, wait, what? I gotta talk about something. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't like when this happens. I don't like when this happens. I don't like when this happens. Okay, next person. You're like, okay. And then you go for three months, five days a week, and before you know it, like all that energy that was locked up inside you, if you try, it will come out. Like you will have a better understanding. But then the next levels, the self care, the self love, the meditation. For me, when I was in that space, it got me out of the house because I was in such routine. A, I was yeah. in such a dark hole and i wouldn't leave my house and it, you do it, outpatient it just got me out no out. i i just did therapy and i, okay. I joined a, a church group it was called the divorce care although that oh, wasn't nice. really where my yeah, depression like, came from but it was uh it was bigger than that but but it, it got me out and it got me around people and it got me talking and it got it just it was and you had kids at the time some correct yeah it was some yeah sort so of i didn't have no kids like outlet it was like, like my full-time thing and like i nine got to four. the body moving and you got you a body in motion stays in motion right like i yeah. had to get the body moving and get and once i got moving and i move a little bit more the next day i move a little bit more and and oh it, shit who said that I mean, before yeah yeah, yeah 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 well you're talking about exercise but that is true Moving, yeah, just moving. I've been getting back in the ground, baby. I had a good workout today. Oh, you gotta nice. move, and then the movement of the mind. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I learned pranayama, and I learned how our oxygen channels in our brain are connected to our nervous system, and I practiced it for thirteen straight days, like hard, like w- football. What are you calling it? Pranayama. Pranayama. What type of breathing. What? What is it? What is it? The one I was taught was single nostril and dual nostril and then i study an indian version of of breathing called kriya and that's a a tongue a tongue and throat process 14 seconds up 14 seconds down so what is wim hof is that only related to cold water breathing wim hof found his nothing to do with cold water breathing no it's uh he just found his thing breathing though he found no, out. We, we, did, we did it. You remember? Did we do anything? Of course. With so I'm breathing? asking what the difference is. What um, is yeah, but I'm saying, you know, we, we didn't do any breathing in the water, remember? Right. Well, we, we did. did. We absolutely did do breathing in the water. No, we just but chilled. But it wasn't like, it wasn't the controlled breathing. Controlled breathing. The breathing, the controlled breathing was for when we did the, uh, like, the meditation shit. Okay, That's well, what they're, we bo- they're both 
I don't think I, they're I've never connected. Heard of, I've never heard of what, what I mean, you mentioned. I'm just connected. saying, what is the difference? Are they connected? This is the confusion in the West. This is what I'm trying to help with, with Spoga, yeah. with sports yoga, because it's the Western world is like, all right, I, I, I got Starbucks, I got Dunkin' Donuts, I got, mm. you know, like, but it's called Wim Hof isn't you know from what I'm America, is he? It's all the same. Iceland. Iceland. Breathing is Iceland. Iceland. Breathing's all, I'm saying breathing's all the same, and like, Wim Hof just created a platform where he's giving people understanding that through his suffering, he found out sitting in cold water calms his nervous system, calms his, his, his pain, you know, and his breathing techniques are kind of like adrenaline focused, you know, it's but, like, right. yeah. whereas the pranayama is like an ancient Sanskrit written, it's written in books from thousands of years ago. It's written all over the globe, but we just don't practice it anymore. Like, it's just a lost art. I know. I guess what I was saying was the actual technique. Technique of I could doing show it. you right now. I could show you single nostril pranayama <clears throat> if you like. You could practice it. Mm -hmm. And what it will do is exactly what it's. You get the in one, out one, right? Yeah, so you. <laughs> I can't even go out that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could do that, bro. Well, the Kriya yoga you could do, which is, which is the throw. I'll show you the Kriya. Kriya is the, Kriya is the one. Kriya is what Jesus did, you know? I've been, I've been practicing Kriya for like a little bit over five years, and holy smokes, it is, it's no joke. 14 in, 14 out, that's tough. So, essentially, you have to face the east, you have to face the sun. Like, there's a whole thing to it, you know, but I I, I kind of do my own thing. Um, And like, with the throat, you have to, like... <laughs> You have to kind of like maybe put like oil or something like you have to kind of like make it like, you know, it's got, I guess it's got to have the ability for air to go up and down the trachea. Right. He does it with lube. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I couldn't believe I beat him to that. I was waiting. For wow, it was so old. I did, it was such low hanging fruit. I didn't go after it. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I kept waiting so for it. So you curl the tongue like that. Okay. And obviously you're in a meditation. And when you do the inhale, the sound is ha, H-A-U. So it's like. And you're focusing on like the base of your spine. And you're imagining a pipe, a hollow pipe. And when you start with that inhale. You're imagining it going all the way up, and when it gets to here, you're holding hesitantly, and then you're going to, now the exhale's E, and now it's going behind the spine and down, and it's. Why don't you go 14 seconds down, and you just do that 14 times, and then there's different postures, one where you sit with one leg, and you do that breathing technique for like three rounds, and the other leg. And then you do one where you like squeeze all your senses, hold your breath for like 25 seconds when you inhale and all that cosmic energy like sits in your brain. And then you do the controlled exhale after the 25 seconds. So, so, so well, just the, the regular one, it's 14 in, 14 out, you, you pause in the middle? A slight hesitation, yeah. Now wait, tell me that. Tongue trying to break, reach the back of your wait, throat. Wait, let me get a picture of that. Hang on. I'll you. We can practice, bro. I'll come by. I'll teach you. Kriya Yoga is an ancient science that is literally the cure to all things. What's um, what's the breathing? Re uh, hy 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 holotropic breathing? You hear that? It's, where you, like it's, got, it's Wim Hof kind of, mm -hmm. but for fucking two hours. Yeah. So well, the Kriya out. Yoga sequence and the Vedic breathing techniques and chakra locking and chakra opening techniques I studied with the yogi who locked himself in his house for 999 days and studied himself and he created these sound techniques these vibration techniques to lock and open your energy portals and i did those for 13 days and it's real like the energy in your body you just you don't feel nothing anymore you locked feel like a lightning bolt in his house for 909 yeah uh, isn't it a, 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 an incredible years. amount of energy come from the sun that seems to be a long time away from the sun <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what his routine was, but he went from being like a successful business guy and then he moved to Japan. There was like a high suicide rate out there. He wrote a poem and then when he moved back to Nepal, he like lost all of his money and opened up a retreat center and went full time.
He's but, Nepalese, He's from yeah, the region? Yeah, Rajesh. Rajesh, wow. beautiful family. He's got two kids, his wife. Um, you know, they taught me so much in 13 days there, those kids. They're doing pranayama first thing in the morning. You know, it's just a different... Yeah, sure, of course. They go to school 12 months a year. The dad's riding them down a mountain every morning on a scooter, four in the morning, five in the morning, you know? Then he's going down to the village. I went on his little back in the village, going to the grocery store. Like, just re- like I needed to go to the doctor. I had, like, a, a cyst, in, a, a sty on my eye. We went to a Vedic, a, a, thar- a Ayurvedic doctor down, like, I, see, we have the boardwalk. They have stands like that where there's an Ayurvedic doctor whose dad's dad, 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 dad was a doctor. That's the only way they could become a doctor. Mm-hmm. And you and you walk in, they got all this medicine that's pl- made from plants. I, I'm just curious, how do they cure you or how do they treat your uh, sty? They had a cream. Had a cream. Mm-hmm. Like a Antifungal thing. cream. Like a cream they made, like a no. with plants from the Himalayas. Right. Wow. Yeah. I can make good cream. <laughs> <laughs> you buy it cash too. That's what's <laughs> different out there. You know, I saw a lot out there. People barefoot, people with no tongues, no eyes, people no, no legs, people no legs. Can't talk with no tongue. Why? Yeah. Um, as crazy as it's gonna sound, some, some families are so poor that like kind of like self mutilation is a form of like asking for money from tourists as crazy as that may uh, sound they w- they would sacrifice that's their full time living that's how they survive their tongue and their their eyes. kids tongue or ear so then when so people they come can beg for money and people feel yeah like we're hungry we need mo- you know how many beggars came up to me i, f- I was I felt so sorry until i hung out at a cafe and i saw this one old woman changing outfits all day like going to the same corner oh, wow. like that's just what they do that's the only that's I mean, all you, they you know can, you can you can muddy yourself up and look homeless and get you know but to sacrifice your eyes or your tongue that's next level of that's really come into it that's fucking crazy that's like mental illness shit that's crazy Dude, i'm gonna do that next time too. i take, take my kids that's crazy and kids. i'm sure kids aren't doing it to themselves must be the parents, parents. Do that next because take, their parents the were those tagging? kids you called tagging when they were kids was it All right tagging tagging All right when you had to go to can- or canning or tagging, I guess we call it tagging. I thought call it Munchausen canning? syndrome over canning, here. Canning, maybe like when you go to the fucking supermarket and you say, "Hey, can you donate to the Girl Scouts or donate <laughs> to follow my football team?" What do you call that? Oh, I, I don't know. Right? It's called something. Yeah, canning. I know what you're saying. Canning From back t- in the day, yeah. they used to call it canning, so right? You just fuck, cut your kid's ear off. You'd probably get some fucking little bit more. <laughs> Well, it's all the only knowledge they have. Like, it's a cast case system. I think it's case, cast cast. But I mean, they're, they're, yeah. so it has to be a big tourism. I mean, big obviously time. it is because people go over there to, big to hike. Captain Do especially. Yeah, that's where I saw so most that's, of this. They're capitalizing on the people that I'm sure locally they're like, ah, oh, get away from me. You're you're. We know what you did, but when they capitalize on. Oh people, yeah, I saw it, man. Yeah. I was a part of it for a little bit, and then. You know, I kind of use it to my favor, too, in the stores and stuff. Like, you can kind of, like, negotiate prices for things you want to buy. It's really? crazy. Yeah. I, I bought a, a stone-made Buddha sculpture. Guy wanted, like, 120 bucks. I was like, dude, I got 60 bucks. Got it for 70 you know? Mm-hmm. And I walked out. I was like, all right, I'm leaving. He chased me down. He's like, oh, okay, buddy. Okay, okay, okay. It's like, all right, word. Here's 70 bucks. See you. You know? Like they'll they'll do that. When I came back to America, I was trying to do that here. I was like trying to negotiate with people. Like, what do you mean I can't negotiate? I'm the one who got the money. What are you talking about? You really? You don't think in that, the city? You, you can. don't think you can negotiate? Yeah, like pretty much most places you can, where it's not where it's not like corporate owned. Yeah, right. right. If it's not corporate True. owned, because they're not allowed to do that. If yeah. it's if it's any sort of family business or anything like that, I feel like there's always a room to negotiate. Yeah. No, you're right. I guess you're right. I just haven't exercised that, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just like, I don't know. America's just a little different. When I came back, I was like, man, people don't even say hello when you come out of a mm-hmm. bank, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. whereas there people are barefoot. You know, women got, you know, uh, growth food on the back of their head in a basket. Like, y- 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 but t- yeah, I, I agree, especially the area they they greet you. New York, they New Jersey. People are very doing. friendly around here, but you lived in New Hampshire for a bit. Yeah. Bro, when I go Most home to Maine, people in the world. when I go to Maine, everybody waves to me. Everybody no, very waves. Friendly. Very you know? friendly. It's your only guy on the fucking road. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other person that just waved at me is on the road too. Oh, shit. Yeah, I just think that we live in a... In a I like to be nice and wave. I, listen, I don't know why I love where I live now. I love New Jersey, but it's not a very friendly area. It's really not. 
People can be motherfuckers. But then when you leave, you miss it. Yeah, I do. I I I admit it. it. I admit it. For five years in New Hampshire, I miss Jersey. I do too. Five months in Colorado, I was like, I miss the slumps. I, I miss. I miss the slumps. I just miss the grind. Like yeah. out here, people like got something to people prove. People are gritty here. They got chips on their shoulders, yeah. so yeah. it kind of pushes you. It does. Got to be competitive. The Vail Valley living, right? was a little pretentious for a kid like oh, me. Oh, I'm sure. I Vail couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't go to the bar working, and this guy, you know, you guys are killing that mic, man. You know, my ears. Are, there we go. This guy. He's got like a it comes from like a family of like you know gas companies or something right, you know and he right. goes behind the bar and grabs himself a beer and I work there right. like I couldn't do it no more yeah you know they're locals but like what the fuck yeah you just go behind the bar and grab a beer like I'm trying to work I'm like a nobody you know I'm but not you're from here. catering that area caters mm-hmm. to a money crowd too so that's what you different get, world you know? from yeah. here like com- yeah. complete I, I mean. I was at a place called uh, Roadhouse. I was worked at a steakhouse, basically Wild Game, Rocky Mountain Oysters. You guys know what Rocky Mountain Oysters are? Single nuts yeah. or something? Bull testicles, Bull something the Liver King would probably like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and dead animals hanging up and stuff. It was like a real like gas station kind of spot, and you know, families from Mexico City, you know, um, old families from Vail, like my old college football opponent, who's the the Northwest. Northwestern head coach right now, Chris Kleiman. He was North. He was North Dakota State's defensive coordinator. He was on vacation with his family, and I served him. And he was the defensive coordinator like a season or two before. Like it was real weird out there, mm-hmm. you know. I was like, I, I gotta go back to Jersey. Like, it's a clear sign, you know. Like, I got work to do, you know. Not just sit up in these mountains and meditate all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's great. I love it. It's blissful. But I want to sh- I want to share this. I want to give people. The opportunity to realize that you could change. Like I, I was a football player, athlete, always good kid, kind. You know, definitely people thought I was conceited, but I was definitely just cocky and a little bit. Because if you're a football player, you gotta be a little cocky. You know, straight up, you gotta believe. You gotta believe in yourself because you will be told over and over that you can't. Mm. You're not gonna score. Not the first play. Not the first. Not this team. You know, you're not fast enough. You, You don't hit hard enough. Like. I was the kid, like, when I showed up freshman football, the freshman coach was like, listen, you can't score every time you touch the ball. And I said, watch me. And first first carry, I took it 80 yards. And he was like, all right, I'll shut, I'll shut up. Like, you got to be like that a little bit in football, maybe in, in fighting too. Like, you got to be a little bit of a prick. You got to, like, mm-hmm. believe in yourself a little bit. You can't, I think like, there's a definite difference between confidence and cockiness, though, you know? I, I guess you're like, right. What's like, the definition of cockiness? I feel like every... Most girls want to fuck the cocky guy, but guys want to fight him because they can't stand him. But everybody likes the confident guy. Everybody. I guess that's the board. confident cocky is gets interlaced, I guess, yeah. in some sense. I think there's a big difference, though. I'd rather yeah. be confident than cocky. And there was a day and a time where I'd rather be cocky. I guess uh, it's more from the outside. I, I guess, like, I was viewed upon as cocky. I was confident inside, but I was defensive. Like, if someone was trying to tell me I couldn't do something. Yeah. I couldn't control that. But I think that's confidence. Some people would have called that cocky, yeah. you know. Cocky is you need everybody to know it and see it. You no, need, I, that wasn't my thing. And when you're not on the field, you still need everybody no. to know it and see it. I, I wanted to play against the best, yeah. even down to my last snap. Like, I just wanted to play against the best to see if I could play against the best. That's right. it. I wanted to see if I could play against the best. That's why all I wanted was a camp. Yeah. If I was healthy enough to go to the NFL camp, that would have done it. I would have been like, holy when shit. When you have to tell everybody you're the best, you're cocky. When everybody else is telling other people you're the best, you're probably confident. Yeah, I mean, your opponents, the coaches, like when I was told from coaches, like the head coach from Maine, after my last season against them, like he looked at me. And honestly, like he voted me amongst all those coaches that off season, that season for me to get elected onto third team all conference. I made second team both seasons before. I was preseason first team going into my last year in our conference. And Jack Cosgrove was like, guys, Sturdy's the best running back in the CAA. We all knew he was banged up this year. We all know he still came out and balled out, banged up. He's got to be out. I only ran for 500 yards my senior year. Jack Cosgrove, because my head coach told me, the main head coach is the one who said he needs to be on the all-conference. So, so stop, that, stop hating on me, man. Yeah, but that is why I <laughs> – that that's what pushed me. Like, yeah. I'll, that's respect. Like, I didn't need – a trophy i didn't need those all conference rewards like i would i actually gave those my parents right at the banquet said throw these things the fuck out i was pissed off you know (laughs) but at the same token like 
again people will call you cocky if if you're walking around like kind of strutting your shit you know that i think i think cocky and confidence think you get it done you could back it up that's confident you don't back it up too much you're cocky you know what i mean if you don't back it up too much but you're telling everybody you're the baddest motherfucker yeah. you're the best you're motherfucker cocky. you know what i mean cocky yeah no yeah. question yeah yeah, man. Maybe I think we. You're young it. kids too. You know, you're just you're just figuring yourself out. Yeah, College yeah, is when yeah, I got yeah. grounded. You know, mm. that's when I was like, holy shit, I'm really doing this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a small kid from Tom's River. My fucking dad didn't graduate high school. You know, my dad worked in Elizabeth for my whole life. I didn't have a trainer. I played in the neighborhood and I watched my brothers. That's mm -hmm. it. And I played against them and their friends as much as possible because right. I wanted to show them I could play with them. Because I was the third guy. I was two grades, but you know. My oldest brother, when he was a senior, his other brother was a junior. I was in eighth grade. No, I was in seventh grade. So when I was a freshman, they both were out of high school. Mm. And I was I was competing with them, like sure. racing them that, at that, parties, that'll, you that'll know, wrestling it. them in pools. And they were, they were physical. They were big guys. They were strong. So then I went out there and played football, and it was like I was ready, mm -hmm. you know. It's just it's just is what it is. I didn't. And I was, you know, you get some gifts along Todd, the way. Todd and Frazier, not to keep bringing him back up, but he's a good example of that. Had two older brothers that are not one, one older, one younger, one, two, both older, two older, two older. Two older. Mm -hmm. That obviously pushed him, and there was there was a there was a lot of uh, competitiveness in that family. He oh, was yeah. saying he was saying even at Christmas time they couldn't even fucking play. What was it ping pong and the <laughs> fucking? He said they got a ping pong table for Christmas, and he smashed the whole corner of off playing with his brothers. You know, they got it for Christmas, and you know, at some the, point though, Christmas Day, he smashes it because they're so competitive. They, there's a there's a separation that happens at some point. Oh yeah, somebody's you always know. the standout. Todd just separated. And they himself. can't sit well with you know. Maybe there's some things that the other brothers do really good sure. at home, whether yeah. that's like, you know, uh, ping pong or mm -hmm. stupid shit. But when it comes to opportunity and chance, he capitalized. Mm -hmm. You know, like. My every one of my siblings had somewhat of an opportunity and chance. Mm -hmm. My youngest sibling really didn't. He had ulcerative colitis since he was in seventh grade. Yeah. Fought we it all the way had, to his freshman year. Just had in college. Robert Frank on, who damn near died from ulcerative yeah. colitis. Yeah. He had it from seventh grade to his freshman year of college. He got his colon removed, and he was playing prep school football in Massachusetts with no colon. Like the wow. kid with a colostomy well, bag. Well, he had the colon removed after because he stepped away from football. He was honest with the coach. Wow. You know, and he was a four-year varsity starter right. at high school East, two-year wow. captain, valedictorian, and class president. Wow! I definitely think that helps. Have he was that he was the best in my eyes. Family you know? motivation and drive with other athletes in the house, but you know, you, then you got guys like Frankie that didn't have that, and obviously went to the pinnacle of his, uh, you know, sport without without I'm, having that. I'm sure nobody, he had. There was nobody in your house. Well, I had my cut. Oh, I had, you know, I had an older cousin living in my neighborhood, and I was kicked it with his friends, and you know, I don't know, I'm sure that pushed me a little bit. Kids you know? in the neighborhood, he was a, he was a wrestler, yeah, mm -hmm. he was. Yeah, mm -hmm. kids in the neighborhood school. Man. I had a lot of friends too, like like you know, who had older brothers and stuff like that. I was just fortunate. My two older brothers just happened to be really good in sports, right? And they always pushed me. You know, they always wanted me to be better. Like, you know, I don't know how to explain it. I always wanted to outdo them. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. And my younger brother, I always wanted him to do out, outdo me. Sure. You know, but yeah, there's like that competitiveness no matter what. Now, though, as we're adults, now there's kids, you know, now we're just kind of just chilling. Like, we just, just live in life. But back in those days, yeah, we definitely, a lot of fights and wars in that house, 100%. I believe it, man. It was a jungle, 100%. <laughs> Yeah, man, I think uh, I think we can leave it there, brother. It was a it was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks and for coming on. Nico to have you on. Good times, brother. Always. Yeah, in the you house. Guys. You got to you, uh, you got to sign our board, pal. We have all the That's guests right. on it before sure. you leave. So I got to give you the Yahweh the Cosmos. Signature. Absolutely, man. Yeah, hundred percent respect. We got some new Thank reading material for our coffee table here too. Yeah, so absolutely appreciate you, bro. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. God bless.